what they're doing. In the meantime, let's get to Bob Moon. He's got world and national headlines. Hey, Bob. Jason Carroll, good day. The Senate is set to vote today on the biggest economic rescue measure in U.S. history after a $2 trillion-plus deal was struck between leaders of both parties and the White House. As big as that sounds, it was met with a dire warning today from New York Governor Andrew Cuomo, who says his state is on the verge of a full-on crisis and a lot more federal help will be needed. This response to this virus has probably already cost us $1 billion. It will probably cost us several billion dollars when we're done. Uh, New York City only gets $1.3 billion from this package. Uh, That is a drop in the bucket as to need. Cuomo says as many as 140,000 hospital beds may be needed soon in a state that has 53,000. From the biggest cities to the smallest towns, social distancing might sound silly in wide open places where neighbors are far up the road and working from home involves branding calves or riding alone on a tractor, but rural America's main streets are empty too, and their medical clinics overwhelmed by the worried. And there's heartbreak from coast to coast. New York City's morgues are reported to be nearing capacity, and in Los Angeles, funerals are being barred because of rules against large gatherings. South Bay mortuary owner Mark McKay says families can visit their loved ones only five at a time, and those who die of COVID-19 must immediately be buried or cremated. There's been a lot of stress and anxiety created. These families are very distraught. They're in denial. Some grieving families are unable to say goodbye. Global News, 24 hours a day, on air and on Quick Take by Bloomberg. I'm Bob Moon. Asset managers who seize change to launch new strategies, add distribution channels, or exploit new technology to re-engineer the investor experience are often rewarded. However, in an industry paralyzed with complexity, few act with agility or decisively. Few run their business strategically. Yet, the most competitive managers in the market know, with the right partner and a flexible operating platform, you can. Go boldly toward change with SEI Investment Manager Services. Determination and operational strength are both essential factors for growth in asset Management. I'm Steve Meyer, President and Head of SEI's Investment Manager Services Division. We know that disruptive forces create opportunities around the world. If you see potential and change, our industry specialists will maximize SEI's integrated platform of data and risk management, global investment operations, compliance support, and investor services to position your asset management business for success. Come grow with us. With SEI Investment Manager Services, you lead the charge in a competitive marketplace. Learn more at SEIC.com slash seize change. Business is constantly evolving. Is your financial printer evolving to keep ahead of the curve? At Command Financial, we are redefining financial printing by providing industry-leading expertise, leveraging technology, and honing processes and best practices. Every day, Command helps SEC registrants, as well as members of their working groups, including securities attorneys and investment bankers, prepare, file, and disseminate regulatory and disclosure documents, such as registration statements, M&A documents, and mutual fund prospectuses and reports. Command provides a full range of services to help you effectively complete your deal, meet your disclosure requirements, and achieve your shareholder communications objectives. Visit our website at commandfinancial.com and learn how we're evolving, not only with the times, but also with your business requirements. Command Financial, redefining financial printing. Life. It's a funny old game, isn't it? One minute you're on top, the next, you need all the help you can get. So make sure you're there for those around you. Don't just be a spectator. Be a supporter. Bleed for life. Join us at blood.co.uk. Did you know your favorite radio stations are in your pocket? Yes, the TuneIn app lets you listen to the same radio stations you pick up on your home or car radio anywhere you want. To see all the stations broadcasting in your area, find the local radio section on the home screen. Keep it local with TuneIn. You love TuneIn for live breaking news from CNN, MSNBC, Fox, CNBC, and more. But when you can't catch your favorite show as it airs, it might just be a click away as a podcast. Search your favorite news station to explore all the on demand news shows on TuneIn. It's TuneIn Sports on this day, March 25th, 1972. 
UCLA men's basketball wins its sixth consecutive national basketball title. UCLA has won its sixth consecutive NCAA basketball championship, and pandemonium reigns as delirious UCLA players are congratulated by their Florida State rivals as well as their fans. To listen to conversations breaking down the moments just like this, click on sports to be part of the discussion on TuneIn. Today's investors want a financial relationship that's on demand, customized, and leverages the latest digital technology. At BNY Mellon's Pershing, helping advisory firms and broker dealers create great experiences for their clients is our priority. Through our integrated wealth experience, we give you a high touch service, flexible technology choices, and expert insights so you can deliver a highly personalized experience to your clients at every step. From onboarding to wealth planning, to performance analysis and more. And because we're part of BNY Mellon, you'll benefit from more than 230 years of strength and stability. At Pershing, we're personally invested in your success. Visit Pershing.com to learn more about Pershing's integrated wealth experience. Pershing LLC and Pershing Advisor Solutions LLC are both members of FINRA and SIPC. There are everyday actions to help prevent the spread of respiratory diseases. Wash your hands. Avoid close contact with people who are sick. Avoid touching your eyes, nose, and mouth. Stay home when you are sick. Cover your cough or sneeze. Clean and disinfect frequently touched objects with household cleaning spray. For more information, visit cdc.gov slash COVID-19. This message brought to you by the National Association of Broadcasters and this station. Message and data rates may apply. TNC and privacy terms can be found at babble.com slash terms. Please don't text and drive. Have you wanted to speak a new language, but you thought it'd be too hard or take too much time? Then try Babbel for free by texting EXPLORE to 64000. In just 15 minutes a day, you'll be on your way to speaking a new language in just a few weeks. And right now, you can try Babbel for free. Babbel starts out teaching you words and phrases by matching them with pictures. You won't believe how easy the interactive program is. Soon the sentences get a little bigger, and before you know it, you're having simulated conversations voiced by native speakers. And because Babbel is crafted by language experts and uses the space repetition method in just 10 to 15 minutes a day you'll be speaking the language of your choice with real confidence with Babbel, you can speak a language just text explore to 64000 and start your first lesson in the language of your choice for free download the Babbel app or text explore to 64000 and try it for free text e-x-p-l-o-r-e to 64000 hey y'all jeff foxworthy here Now, if you've ever found yourself repeating the same thing over and over for 75 years, you might be Smokey Bear. Only you can prevent wildfires. That's why I'm filling in for Smokey to switch things up, because there's a lot more to say. And I should know, because my grandfather was a firefighter, and one of the things he taught me is that the people that love the outdoors the most are often the ones accidentally starting wildfires, which means... Always (laughs) B-Y-O-B. No, bring your own bucket to the campfire. And be extra careful with things like burning yard trimmings. Don't just walk away or chances are you might be starting a wildfire. So for the love of the outdoors, go to SmokeyBear.com to learn more about wildfire prevention. Brought to you by the U.S. Forest Service, your state forester, and the Ad Council. Markets, headlines, and breaking news 24 hours a day at Bloomberg.com, the Bloomberg Business app, and on Quick Take by Bloomberg. This is a Bloomberg Business Flash. From Bloomberg World Headquarters, I'm Charlie Pellet. We've got the Dow, the S&P, and NASDAQ all moving higher. S&P 500 index on track for its biggest two-day advance since 1987 after negotiations in Congress paved the way for a vote on a stimulus bill this week. Right now, the S&P up 98 points. That is an advance of 4%. The Dow up 1,143 points, up 5.5%. And NASDAQ is up 169 points, up now by 2.3%. Boeing rallying more than 30%, lifting the price-weighted Dow towards its best two days since 1933. Boeing shares again higher by 30% at 165.80. The 10-year up 8.30 seconds with a yield of 
0.81%. Gold is down 1.2% right now, 16.12 the ounce. West Texas Intermediate Crude up 2.8%, 24.69 a barrel. Recapping stocks higher, S&P up by 100 points, a gain there of 4.1%. I'm Charlie Pellet. That is a Bloomberg Business Flash. Well, Charlie, thank you so much. You're listening to Bloomberg Business this week. One company certainly uh, stepping into the conversation in a big way is 3M. You have heard a number of public officials. Most recently, I believe yesterday, the mayor of New York City is speaking about Mike Roman, the CEO of 3M. Well, he spoke with our own David Weston yesterday, Mike Roman did, about the efforts the company is making to work with the White House. Check it out. We've been working very closely with the government. We've been working you know, with uh, with Vice President Pence from his visit, looking at how to make sure that we can shift what have been the industrial N95 respirators into healthcare. So it was really appreciate the the emergency use authorization out of the FDA and then the PrEP Act amendment, which enabled us to be able to deliver our industrial respirators, that N95, to the healthcare workers at the front line. That was the first big step. So that is the 3M CEO, Mike Roman, talking uh, with our own Bloomberg, David Weston. Well, 3M and its uh, overall team caught up with our Brian Gruley. He's got a great story that's the cover of the magazine this week. Brian is projects and investigations reporter at Bloomberg News. He's with us right now on the phone from Chicago. Also with us, Jill Weber, editor of Bloomberg Business Week magazine. He's on the phone from Brooklyn. So, Brian, let me kick it off with you. I mean, 3M... Man, this is a company that has learned from past crises and figured out how to be ready for what we needed today. Talk to us about um, what they learned. Uh, I believe it was through SARS. Yeah, so 18 years ago, uh, you had the SARS outbreak, 2002, 2003. And after that, 3M realized they really weren't geared up to... Uh, to address a real big surge in demand. And so then they decided that uh, they would build into their plants what they called surge capacity. And over the years, um, they refined this. But, but essentially what it is, is putting in idle lines, you know, lines you don't use, which, you know, assembly lines you don't use, which runs contrary to most um business sense. I mean, when, when we talk about automobile manufacturers, for instance, and we talk about down capacity, that's money going out the door because you're not, you're paying for that. You have carrying costs on that equipment and machinery and you're not getting any money for it. So this is something that 3M thought would, would be helpful in times of crisis and, and they've used it over and over again, but, but um, it never has it come into such important play as it is now right so joel weber uh, come on in here what struck you about this story because obviously everything's a business story as you often say and man this is just a business squarely in the heart of a crisis yeah so i i um i've thought about this story a lot because it was one of the first things that came to mind a couple of weeks ago as we were just seeing a huge um, surge in demand for for a lot of consumer products, actually, from things like toilet paper to Gojo hand sanitizer and even Clorox bleach, right? Like, and the, the idea kind of just jumped in my head of like, you know, how do you make more of these products yesterday? Mm-hmm. How does how does 3M manufacture millions and millions of masks uh, in addition to the ones that they were already doing? So I sort of just started kicking that idea around with people like Brian and Rick Clue, who's also the co-byline on this story. And 3M just kind of came back to us again as like the company, like in the middle of a crisis like this. And lo and behold, it turns out that they're a company that actually has built this manufacturing technique into its factory for precisely this moment. And so they've been able to go into overdrive actually back at beginning in January. And what we're seeing now is like by the end of the year, they, they may have been able to make as many as more than a billion face masks. And that's just incredible when you think about a company that was just sort of potentially in the right place at the right time and, and had the capacity and wherewithal to kind of plan for the future. 
What's interesting, too, is, you know, and Brian, I, I just think about, this is a company, if we think about 3M, they have just so many different products under their roofs, or under their roof. And most of us think about the Post-it notes and, you know, those things. But, right. I mean, they do so much more. This is a company that's been around for a long time. Yeah, they've, they're really experts in materials, creating materials. And you mentioned one Post-it, which is one of their, it's part of, you know, the adhesives they make, which include industrial adhesives and all sorts of other things. But they have, I think, 46 different technology platforms they build from. This is a good thing for them, and it's, sometimes it's a bad thing because it's tough to keep all those different businesses going in the right direction, and when one or two are not, Wall Street doesn't like that. They want them all to be going up at the same time. So they, they've had some struggles over the last couple of years, but uh, they're doing pretty pretty well right now, especially in this particular spot. And uh, it's sort of an odd feel-good story in the midst of this crisis, which produces so much green news. It is interesting, too. And, and Joel, it strikes me that... You know, you spend, I know, a lot of time thinking about leadership and CEOs and strategy. I mean, this could be, I mean, we're talking about Mike Roman in this case, but I mean, this could be a separating moment, a separation moment for, in many cases for leadership at some of the world's most important companies, right? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And and look, like 3M has had some um, difficulties just in general with the, you know, share price. And, yeah. and you know, we'll, we'll see if this is sort of one of those moments that, allows the company to kind of to rise above. I mean, like, at the very least, you're, if you're working for this company right now, you've got a cause you can believe in. Yeah. And that might be a distinguishing factor for its business compared to just some other ones that, you know, it's nice to have, but maybe not something that you need to have. And when you're able to bring a billion products into the world that have the capacity to save lives and, and bring down, um, you know, flatten the curve um, and protect medical workers... Um, I think that that really goes a long way for just you know embolden, emboldening your employees to to get behind the cause, and that you know that just feels like the the wind must be at your back at that point. Well, yeah, and Brian, speak to that because they were able to bring in a ton more workers. They've had workers working overtime, you know, respecting social distancing, but those workers are there um, and working around the clock. Yeah, um, you know, most companies rightfully have emptied out. Uh, ours, you know, including ours, you know, we're, we're all, well, just about all of us are working from home. Yeah. We has 96,000 employees. More than half of them are going into factories and warehouses um, every day to work. And so, you know, um, they're like the uh, the supply line in the military uh, vernacular, you know, the, the first, the people on the front lines are the doctors and the nurses and all the medical personnel and these people are back in the supply line. Trying to keep well, one, what, one other thing, just to that end, Brian, that I think is really worth mentioning about this story is another element that 3M figured out long ago was that they couldn't have the same sort of international supply chains that you might have for other products. So they've learned to actually localize the supply chain so that the North America supply of, of N95 right. masks comes from North America. It doesn't come from China. China supplies itself. Europe supplies itself. And that's valuable tool right now. Right. All right. We're going to leave it there. Thank you both so much. Joel Weber, editor of Bloomberg Business Week. Brian Gruley, projects and investigations reporter for Bloomberg News. This is Bloomberg Business Week. Life. It's a funny old game, isn't it? One minute you're on top, the next, you need all the help you can get. So make sure you're there for those around you. Don't just be a spectator. Be a supporter. Bleed for life. Join us at blood.co.uk. Busy day. Relax with a Sky's Doll movie tonight. Who's a Yeti on my roof? <gasps> Stay in for a cool adventure with Abominable. You can do magic? Watch the latest movie straight from the cinema. I promise to take Everest home. Wow. And he's not home yet. Abominable. Available now in Sky Store. Oh, no. Oh, this is amazing. Faster. It's tune in sports on this day. March 25th, 1972. UCLA men's basketball wins its sixth consecutive. 
national basketball title. UCLA has won its sixth consecutive NCAA basketball championship, and pandemonium reigns as delirious UCLA players are congratulated by their Florida State rivals as well as their fans. To listen to conversations breaking down the moments just like this, click on sports to be part of the discussion on TuneIn. Leave it to the New York Times to make the most intelligent pop music podcast out there. Welcome to the New York Times Popcast. On the Popcast, the Times music staff gets together for a weekly roundtable on the hottest topics in popular music. From award show autopsies and reactions to new releases to difficult to process scandals and emerging themes in the music landscape, hear distinguished music critics share their perspectives on the latest music news, songs, albums, and artists of note on the New York Times Popcast. Search and favorite Popcast to join the conversation. 24 hours a day at Bloomberg.com, on the Bloomberg Business app, and on Quick Take by Bloomberg. This is Bloomberg Radio. Markets, headlines, and breaking news 24 hours a day at Bloomberg.com, the Bloomberg Business app, and on Quick Take by Bloomberg. This is a Bloomberg Business Flash. From Bloomberg World Headquarters, I'm Charlie Pellet. We move into the final hour of trading on this Wednesday. We've got the Dow, the S&P, and NASDAQ all rallying a 105-point gain right now in the S&P 500 index, up by 4.3%. S&P now at 2552. The Dow up 1,200 points. That's a gain of 5 Point eight percent, twenty one thousand nine hundred nineteen. While Nasdaq is up one hundred seventy five points, higher by two point four percent. Nasdaq now at seventy five ninety two. Ten year yield point eight four percent. Stocks looking to post their first back to back gain since the coronavirus crisis began. As investors await unprecedented government spending packages to the tune of two trillion dollars, aimed at countering the hit from the pandemic. Economist Megan Green is with the Harvard Kennedy School. The size is impressive. Look, that's 10% of GDP, and if you can leverage up $425 billion of it uh, with the Fed, that, that brings it up to $6 trillion, which is 30% of GDP. If you want a comparison, the Europeans are talking about capping their support at 2% of GDP. So the size is pretty astounding. We are seeing a rally in bank shares today. J.P. Morgan Chase, for example, up by 6.8%. Citigroup shares up by 8.9%. Bank of America pushing higher by 4.2%. Wells Fargo, based in San Francisco, up now by 3.4%. Again, the Dow, the S&P, and NASDAQ are all surging. Nike shares are higher after earnings. Online order growth helped sales vault past Wall Street estimates. Nike rallying by 11.6%. Gold is down one3 Three percent, sixteen ten the ounce. West Texas Intermediate Crude Oil up three point four percent, twenty four eighty three a barrel on WTI. So again, recapping the equity numbers here on track for back to back gains. Stay with Bloomberg right through the close to see where things shake out. S and P up by one hundred and five points right now. That is a gain of four point three percent. Nasdaq up two point three percent. The Dow up five point eight percent. I'm Charlie Pellet. That's a Bloomberg Business Flash. You're listening to Bloomberg Business Week with Carol Masser and Jason Kelly on Bloomberg Radio. All right, got to talk about some Business Week economics right now. We've got Yelena Shalateva with a senior U.S. economist at Bloomberg Economics on the phone in New Jersey. Peter Coy, also with us, economics editor at Bloomberg Business Week. He's got a story in the magazine we'll get to in just a moment. He's on the phone from New Jersey as well. Yelena, let's start with you, though. Uh, watching some of the economic numbers, we still have data releases. We're all bracing for that weekly read on unemployment claims tomorrow. Expected it to be a big number. Um, what's important for us uh, in your view, especially in these, this environment right now, where we know the U.S. economy is taking a big hit? Okay, well, uh, good afternoon from Long Island, uh, Carol. Uh, and uh, you're right, yeah, there are some uh, economic data coming out, but uh, most of it is already obsolete. So the durable goods numbers this morning uh, were relatively okay, uh, uh, given what is actually coming in, in, in the next uh, few months. So we expect an outright cap- CapEx uh, recession, and uh, uh, we think that the decline in business investment will, be, will exceed uh, what we saw during the uh, Great Recession. So the uh, problem with uh, decline in uh, business investment is that they will last even as uh, consumer spending might start to recover in the second half of the year. 
because companies will need money to invest and uh, corporate profits will simply plummet, uh, which means any chance of a V-shaped recovery is uh, basically non-existent. And so what are you guys modeling in terms of the recovery at this point, Yelena, or is it just too, too, too soon to tell? I mean, it will definitely depend on uh, how long the crisis will sure. last, but uh, we, we think that we might see some signs of recovery in the second half of the year uh, with uh, personal spending uh, rebounding slightly. And uh, for uh, the second quarter, we penciled in 9% decline, uh, for overall GDP, uh, which uh, might actually be much, much larger. So the, there's a wide range of estimates uh, out uh, there, but um, it, it really depends on the length of the crisis. Yeah. Another I thing I would like yeah, to mention is the unemployment benefits uh, you mentioned earlier in, the, in our conversation. So we expect a uh, uh, one million increase uh, in one week in unemployment benefits uh, to something like 1.7 uh, million uh, for the number reported tomorrow. So uh, that would uh, probably continue to increase in coming weeks because the only thing limiting the number of unemployment benefits uh, claims right now is uh, the capacity of the uh, Department of Labor website that are being right. uh, absolutely hammered. Right, and we've heard that from various governors and mayors talking about, you know, folks trying to file unemployment benefits. Um, Yelena Shalejeva, thank you so much of our Bloomberg Economics team and teeing us, perf teeing us up really perfectly for Peter Coy, our economics editor uh, at Bloomberg Businessweek. He's on the phone in New Jersey. Peter, you've got a, a story that's in the magazine, online, and on the terminal about big ideas to save the economy. Uh, there are so many different ideas that are being put out there, um, but it really is all, you know, how do did you go about writing this week? Well, I decided to focus on business. We are business week after all. Mm -hmm. And I, I take it for granted that we have to do a lot to save the individuals, people who are laid off, people who aren't laid off, but are still in financial stress. That goes without saying, well, maybe it doesn't go without saying it should be said very clearly. But what I'm talking about is what to do to rescue businesses. And I think that cannot be given short shrift because when a company fails, if, if, it, if it goes through hard times and comes back, that's one thing. But if it actually fails, if, it, if, it, if it's liquidated, goes out of business, there is real damage done, not just to the employees of that firm and its owners, but to the economy as a whole. It's going to be much harder for the economy to bounce back after this COVID virus fades if people... Uh, if, if companies have been dismantled and have to be started from scratch, there's organizational capital, there's social capital that's permanently lost. I'm thinking about teams. Yeah. We have a lot of teams working at Bloomberg, so we know about this. But there are teams throughout the economy. When those teams are broken up, it's hard to put them back together again. Yeah, I love this line you have in your story, Peter. Hurt but don't kill, bend it but do not break it. Uh, certainly policymakers are thinking along those lines, but CEOs have to be thinking that way too, right? Right. If you're a CEO, you're thinking, look, I've got to just find some way to get past this. Yeah. And if, if it means reaching out to the government for help, you know, I'll do it because I can't afford to lose these people. They might not come back to me. You know, we, we had a tight labor market before this crisis hit, and I hope we'll have a tight labor market after it passes uh, And because there's a shortage of, of skilled people in the economy. There has been, and there will be again. You don't want to lose your teams. Well, I'm thinking of my dad in physics, you know, inertia. To get something going, it takes a lot more than just to keep something moving along. And that's, I think, how we need to think about it. Um, so when you, okay, so with this economics lens, uh, Peter, that you're looking at things and what needs to be done for businesses, when you hear what's coming out of Washington, are these the right policies? We've got about 50 seconds here. Yeah, I, I think they, they're going in definitely in the right direction because there is a balance of aid to individuals and support for companies. 
whether it's enough, I kind of tend to doubt it. I think they're already talking about, we've, this was the third bill, the one that's uh, going through Congress now. They're talking about fourth and fifth measures. Those very well may be needed. So the right direction, but maybe just not quite enough firepower yet. Right. And what you, I love also the line, you know, I think in the last paragraph of your story, whatever is done needs to be done soon because those yes. layoffs have already exactly. begun. Exactly. Yep. So really key. So <laughs> how optimistic are you, uh, Peter, just 10 seconds that this will happen? Um, judging from how quickly this third bill got through Congress, of course, it hasn't completely passed yet. I guess I am pretty optimistic with the caveat that Trump seems to be pushing in the wrong direction right now. Yeah. All right. Peter Coy, always such a treat to talk to you. Uh, it's a must read. We're going to put it out on Twitter. Peter Coy, economics editor. He's got a piece in the Bloomberg Business Week magazine this week. It's online and on the terminal. Check it out now. In the meantime, let's listen to Bob Moon. He's got world and national headlines. Hi, Bob. Hi, Jason. The U.S. Senate is completing work on a bill to sustain the U.S. economy through the devastating blow rendered by the coronavirus. Bloomberg's Irv Chapman reports from Washington. Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell stressed the bipartisan effort that resulted in this bill, though he blamed Democrats for three days of needless delay. A fight has arrived at our shores. We did not seek it. We did not want it. But now we're going to win it. Americans will keep finding creative ways to stand united, even if they have to stand six feet apart. McConnell added that this is not an economic stimulus, but simply emergency relief. In Washington, Earth Chapman, Bloomberg Radio. All across America, the scope of the tragedy grows. Governor Phil Murphy of New Jersey updating the people of his state at a press conference this afternoon with word the total number of deaths related to the disease in the Garden State is now 62. 18 more COVID-19 related deaths in our state, and that number does not get any easier to report, I promise you. The the priority now, he says, is making more hospital beds available. 18,403 acute care beds, including for critical care, and over the next three weeks, the goal is to increase that capacity by 2,300. New York Governor Andrew Cuomo says as many as 140,000 hospital beds may be needed in a state that has far less than that, about 5,300. Global News, 24 hours a day, on air and on Quick Take by Bloomberg, powered by more than 2,700 journalists and analysts in more than 120 countries. I'm Bob Moon. It's called Bloomberg Daybreak Europe, because that's easier to remember than continuously gathered news and analysis from an entire country. Are we moving through the worst of the European growth slump? Bloomberg Daybreak Europe. Is there a sense that the environment for multinationals in Ireland is becoming a bit more difficult? Worth remembering. What indicators are you looking at? Weekdays at 1 a.m. Eastern on Bloomberg Radio, the Bloomberg Business app, and BloombergRadio.com. Bloomberg, the world is listening. Adopt US Kids presents What to Expect When You're Expecting A Teenager Learning the Lingo GOAT G-O-A-T Acronym Stands for Greatest of All Time As in Spaghetti sandwiches for dinner? They're my fave Dad You're the GOAT You don't have to speak teen to be a perfect parent Thousands of teens in foster care will love you just the same Visit AdoptUSKids.org Brought to you by the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services Adopt US Kids and the Ad Council in-depth analysis, concise reporting, need-to-know global business news. Around the world and across the markets, Bloomberg connects the dots for decision makers. Stay on top of today's headlines. Follow big breakthroughs in tech. Understand the latest political issues. See how the world's wealthiest are spending their money. Track what's happening in the markets and much more. Subscribe today to Bloomberg, the global standard for business reporting. Get it all at Bloomberg.com slash subscriptions. Hi, I'm Danica Patrick. Watching my nieces grow, play, and learn is amazing, but not every child gets to be carefree. One in six kids in the U.S. are hungry. This breaks my heart, and it's something that Feeding America is working to change. Each year, the Feeding America network of food banks rescues billions of pounds of good food that would have gone to waste and gives it to families in need. To help, visit feedingamerica.org. Brought to you by Feeding America and the Ad Council. Life. 
It's a funny old game, isn't it? One minute you're on top, the next, you need all the help you can get. <laughs> so make sure you're there for those around you. Don't just be a spectator. Be a supporter. Bleed for life. Join us at blood.co.uk. Three is a magic number. 300 schemes to help bugs and bees Supporting environmental needs 8,000 grants for local sports And performing arts get our support 7 millionaires every week The nation's on a winning streak 30 million pounds to good causes Every week Who the thought it? These are the magic numbers Your numbers make amazing happen The National Lottery Rules and procedures apply Players must be 16 or over Mayday, Mayday, this is Red Dwarf. Our engines are dead and we're being sucked into a black hole. Can anyone hear me? Over? The only thing that's over is us, Crichton. We're finished. Guys, relax. I've got smart breakdown with the AA. It sends them your vehicle's fault data, so they should know what's wrong before they even get here. Mm, I don't believe it. What, that they'll already know what's wrong? No, that you're actually capable of something useful. The future of breakdown today. The AA. Drive smart. See the AA.com for details. Did you know your favorite radio stations are in your pocket? Yes, the TuneIn app lets you listen to the same radio stations you pick up on your home or car radio anywhere you want. To see all the stations broadcasting in your area, find the local radio section on the home screen. Keep it local with TuneIn. It's TuneIn Sports on this day. March 25th, 1972. UCLA men's basketball wins its sixth consecutive national basketball title. UCLA has won its sixth consecutive NCAA basketball championship and pandemonium reigns as delirious UCLA players are congratulated by their Florida State rivals as well as their fans. To listen to conversations breaking down the moments just like this, click on sports to be part of the discussion on TuneIn. Leave it to the New York Times to make the most intelligent pop music podcast out there. Welcome to the New York Times Popcast. On the Popcast, the Times music staff gets together for a weekly roundtable on the hottest topics in popular music. From award show autopsies and reactions to new releases to difficult to process scandals and emerging themes in the music landscape, hear distinguished music critics share their perspectives on the latest music news, songs, albums, and artists of note on the New York Times Popcast. Search and favorite Popcast to join the conversation. Listen to this. We know that disruptive forces create opportunities around the world. If you see potential and change, our industry specialists will maximize SCI's integrated platform of data and risk management, global investment operations, compliance support, and investor services to position your asset management business for success. Come grow with us. With SEI Investment Manager Services, you lead the charge in a competitive marketplace. Learn more at SEIC.com slash C's change. Are you interested in a challenging and exciting career? One where you can be part of solving complex challenges across industries and geographies. Bloomberg's ever-expanding technology, data, news, and media services foster innovation, empower clients, and offer nearly limitless opportunities for career growth. Visit Bloomberg.com slash careers today to view our current job opportunities. Bloomberg LP is an equal opportunity employer. The address once again is Bloomberg.com slash careers. Business is constantly evolving. Is your financial printer evolving to keep ahead of the curve? At Command Financial, we are redefining financial printing by providing industry-leading expertise, leveraging technology, and honing processes and best practices. Every day, Command helps SEC registrants, as well as members of their working groups, including securities attorneys and investment bankers, prepare, file, and disseminate regulatory and disclosure documents, such as registration statements, M&A documents, and mutual fund prospectuses and reports. Command provides a full range of services to help you effectively complete your deal, meet your disclosure requirements, and achieve your shareholder communications objectives. Visit our website at commandfinancial.com and learn how we're evolving, not only with the times, but also with your business requirements. Command Financial, redefining financial printing. 
Markets, headlines, and breaking news 24 hours a day at Bloomberg.com, the Bloomberg Business app, and on Quick Take by Bloomberg. This is a Bloomberg Business Flash. On Bloomberg World Headquarters, I'm Charlie Pellet. We've got 43 minutes to go ahead of the closing bell with the Dow, the S&P, and NASDAQ at or near very close to highs of the day. Let's head right over to the first word breaking news desk for today's afternoon call. Here he is working from home, Bill Maloney. And good afternoon, Charlie. That's right. U.S. stocks surging again today with the Dow currently up 1,200 points. S&P is up 108 and NASDAQ climbs by 191. Small caps rise 25 points. The U.S. 10-year yield at 0.87%. And leaders to the upside in the Dow, Boeing, UTX, and Dow, Inc. Note that Boeing is up 30% on the session. Only Walgreens and Walmart fell. Now, Zabotex are up 1.1%. Semis rise 2.9%. And the VIX is lower by 1%. In other news, GM's ratings may be cut to junk by Moody's. And United Airlines said that overall capacity to decline by 68%. Wrapping things up, Micron reports after the bell. Live from the First of Breaking News Desk, I'm Bill Maloney. Charlie? Okay, we thank you very much, Bill. And to hear live breaking news over your Bloomberg type squawk, SQUAWK on your terminal. I'm Charlie Pellet, and that is a Bloomberg Business Flash. All right, Charlie, thank you so much. You're listening to Bloomberg Business Week. Carol Masser along with Jason Kelly. And back with us is someone that is certainly uh, familiar to our audience. We're talking about uh, Boris Jordan, executive chairman of Cure Relief. And uh, he was, of course, named one of the Bloomberg 50. He is joining us on the phone from Miami, Florida. So, of course, you're based in Wakefield, Massachusetts. Um, Boris, nice to have you here. First of all, um, you, Good your family, here. your team and their family, uh, your workers, how's everybody doing? Well, uh, so far, so good. I um, uh, had actually a daughter who um, came down with the virus. She's young. She worked for us uh, 27 years old, and uh, three days later, she's feeling much better. So I hope that's encouragement to everybody. That's obviously a scare for, for me as a father, but um, uh, it was good to hear from her this morning. She, she's in Manhattan. She said to me she's feeling a lot better. Wow, that's interesting. And so, I mean, without, we don't need to, I don't want to, get to invade your privacy at all, but um, it, it's so interesting and, and heartening to hear that, that somebody uh, somebody recovered uh, like that. Anything more you can tell us about her experience? I just think, listen, I, I, I think that overall there's a lot more cases out there yeah. uh, that, that, that we don't know about today. and. Uh, many of them are, as we saw the statistics coming out in New York, are, are with younger people, uh, and they seem to be recovering reasonably well. And I think that's the encouraging thing about this. Obviously, uh, that's not the case with the uh, older population. Right. Uh, and obviously, our our our, our hearts and, and, and minds go out to their well-being. And, and we're doing everything at our company. As you know, we've been granted uh, essential uh, services designation in all of our key markets around the country. Uh, we provide a very important service uh, for for medical patients uh, who are dealing with either um, cancer treatments or or pain treatments or uh, or uh, children's epilepsy, where we provide uh, the necessary drugs uh, to help these um, uh, and products to help these uh, families through difficult times. And you know, our business, like everybody else's, has changed dramatically. Sure, um, we are you know we're serving curbside, uh, we're doing mobile uh, delivery services, uh, we're doing anything we can to keep both our employees. Uh, and um, our clients and 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 partners and and and, and patients safe, right? Uh, uh, so that uh, we can continue to deliver on the products that are necessary for their well being. And so, Boris, help us understand, like, what does that designation allow you to do in in terms of increased uh, latitude or, or operation? Well, we have to, you know, our business for. is very really valuable, and, and I could go for another ten minutes. We didn't get to H Y G. We didn't even get to the high yield bond ETFs, which have seen really big outflows and really big discount NAVs, actually. And but we can move here in a second. To this, and making sure that we can deliver a safe in this products our products in a safe way. And so, you know, what we've done is we've negotiated the curbside delivery that was never allowed in any of the states before. We've negotiated uh, mobile applications and online sales. That hasn't allowed home deliveries. In some states, that was allowed. In many states, it wasn't. So there's a lot of changes taking place. I think they're all positive changes uh, for both uh, this terrible time that we're being faced with now, but also I think going forward, it will help the industry become much more mainstream. I think, you know, just several 
months ago, nobody would have thought that, you know, cannabis would be made essential, would be designated essential services, and it's one of the few industries in the country that has been so far. Well, I think that's really revealing what you just said, and I do wonder, you know, we keep talking about what will be the longer-term and lasting impact of some of the things that we're all doing to adapt in this situation. And I do wonder about the regulatory environment, understanding, okay, what needs to be changed, what needs to be perhaps loosened up. Do you feel like this will ultimately um, stick with us? I think so. I think, listen, the the biggest problem we all face is obviously federal banking and federal legalization. I think it's time for the federal government to understand and see that every governor in this country, uh, that's 30-some-odd governors that have... Uh, medical cannabis in their states have made it, uh, most of them have designated it uh, as essential services. Um, there's huge demand from the population for this. Um, uh, and it's time for the federal government to allow, for instance, credit cards and banking services so that we can make the process even safer today. No matter what we do, we still have to exchange cash, whether it's curbside, whether it's in the store, whether it's on home delivery. That obviously adds to the, you know, the danger of the spread of the virus. Um, and, and we've been requesting this from the federal government now for better part of 10 years, and they're very slow to move on it. And I would say that's the last bit that we'd like to see uh, uh, changed. And we are working, our, our lobbyists are working in Washington as we speak to try and see if we can get that. But, you know, the, they're ingrained in their ways in Washington, D.C., and, and there's still a lot of opposition, even though the population overwhelmingly, 93 percent of the population, is right. for medical cannabis around the country. Boris, I do need to ask you, because I think this is a situation we're all trying to figure out, you know, what workers get really taken care of uh, during a crisis like this? And some of the bigger companies, you know, those workers continue to get paid. Uh, We're certainly not seeing that necessarily in a lot of the hospitality industry. Just got about 50 seconds here. Your workers are being taken care of and everybody's up and working and will be. We are. We are. We are. Our first priority is our employees and our customers. We've broken teams into A teams and B teams. They're working on different shifts. Uh, we've gotten masks and gloves for everyone. Obviously, we have, we're paying bonuses uh, at the end of the month for uh, those workers that are on the front lines uh, in order to keep them incentivized. We are looking after those that are that are, have fallen ill, um, and, and we haven't really had any, so we've been very, very lucky. But we know we will, and so right. and, and we're in you know as you know we're in, in, in 19 states around the country, and so so we, we we have a very wide reach, and we are looking after all our employees, and right. I have to thank all of them today i'm sorry i'm doing that on the radio to say thank you very much for continuing to provide services to our patients all right boris jordan stick around uh, with us we got a few more things we wanted to talk to you about always enjoy catching up with you boris jordan is the executive chairman of cure relief he will be back with us in just a few minutes you are listening to bloomberg business week jason kelly carol masser here broadcasting remotely but here we are this is bloomberg this is a bloomberg money minute Stock prices remain sharply higher, on track for their biggest two-day advance since 1987. Boeing is fueling the Dow's advance up more than 30 percent. The Dow Jones Industrial Average is up 1,230. The S&P 500 up 110. The Nasdaq Composite up 187. The Senate is moving toward a vote on the biggest economic rescue bill in U.S. history. The $2 trillion measure includes a laundry list of spending programs and tax breaks, aimed at easing the economic blow of the coronavirus. Even with few or no stores to close due to the COVID-19 pandemic, some e-commerce companies are still getting hurt. Many online sellers not selling groceries or other essentials are seeing business dry up as consumers pull back. Bank profits could fall to zero this year due to the pandemic under a worst-case analysis from S&P. A less dire scenario would cut 2020 bank profits by about half. Larry Kofsky. Bloomberg Radio. Ladies and gentlemen, we have arrived in Philadelphia. Local time is 3.05 p.m. and the temperature is 67 degrees. At this time, you are now free to use your cellular devices. You know that feeling when you get to turn your phone on after the plane lands? You can have that feeling every time you drive. Make sure your cell phone is stowed away whenever you are behind the wheel. Visit StopTextStopRex.org. A message brought to you by the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration, Project Yellow Light, and the Ad Council. 
In-depth analysis, concise reporting, need-to-know global business news. Around the world and across the markets, Bloomberg connects the dots for decision makers. Stay on top of today's headlines. Follow big breakthroughs in tech. Understand the latest political issues. See how the world's wealthiest are spending their money. Track what's happening in the markets and much more. Subscribe today to Bloomberg, the global standard for business reporting. Get it all at Bloomberg.com slash subscription. Life. It's a funny old game, isn't it? One minute you're on top, the next, you need all the help you can get. <laughs> so make sure you're there for those around you. Don't just be a spectator. Be a supporter. Bleed for life. Join us at blood.co.uk. First thing you think of when you hear cancer, that's it, it's finished. All of a sudden your life becomes about appointments and this test and that test. But then you start to just thank God that those tests are there. Every single day, nearly a thousand people find out that they've got cancer. These donations are absolutely crucial for all of the research to help the families like us. Donate right now to Cancer Research UK. For just £2 a month, you can make a real difference. Thank you for your donations. <laughs> Leave it to the New York Times to make the most intelligent pop music podcast out there. Welcome to the New York Times Popcast. On the Popcast, the Times music staff gets together for a weekly roundtable on the hottest topics in popular music. From award show autopsies and reactions to new releases to difficult to process scandals and emerging themes in the music landscape, here distinguished music critics share their perspectives on the latest music news, songs, albums, and artists of note on the New York Times Popcast. Search and favorite Popcast to join the conversation. Station. In case you didn't know, TuneIn lets you listen to the same radio stations you pick up on your home or car radio, except you can hear them from anywhere. If you want to find a station from somewhere else in the world, navigate to the By Location section under Browse. Keep exploring with TuneIn. It's TuneIn Sports on this day. March 25th, 1972. UCLA men's basketball wins its sixth consecutive national basketball title. UCLA has won its sixth consecutive NCAA basketball championship and pandemonium reigns as delirious UCLA players are congratulated by their Florida State rivals as well as their fans. To listen to conversations breaking down the moments just like this, click on sports to be part of the discussion on TuneIn. Who's both steady and agile, focused on supporting your needs so that you can focus on growing your business and producing results. Exceptional client service and advocating for our clients is at the core of what we do. Our award-winning high-touch team is just one of the benefits of working with BNY Mellon. We help alternative investment managers create great experiences for their clients. Whether it's customized financing, securities lending solutions, platform access, or outsourced trading, BNY Mellon's Pershing is a prime broker who's committed to this business and dedicated to meeting your evolving demands. To learn more about the unique and industry-leading solutions for hedge funds and other alternative managers, visit Pershing.com. Pershing LLC. Member FINRA. NYSE SIPIC. Hi, it's Olivia Munn with my shelter pets, Frankie and Chance. Say hi, guys. <laughs> When I adopted them, I discovered that they both have incredible personalities. Chance's sole purpose in life is to love and to be loved. Frankie is a little bit of a scoundrel and always entertaining. They're a little bit of a lot of things, but they're all pure love. Adopt pure love at theshelterpetproject.org. Brought to you by the Ad Council, the Humane Society of the United States, and Maddie's Fund. Bloomberg Daybreak Asia. Are you seeing a lot more buying power on the part of younger people in China? Financial news made in Asia for use everywhere. It is a bit of a waiting game. Tonight at 6 Eastern on Bloomberg Radio. Bloomberg, the world is listening. Broadcasting live to New York, Bloomberg 1130, to Washington, D.C., Bloomberg 991, to Boston, Bloomberg 1061, to San Francisco, Bloomberg 960, to the country, Sirius XM Channel 119, and around the globe, the Bloomberg Business app and BloombergRadio.com. This is Bloomberg Business Week. Coming up, we're going to continue our conversation with Boris Jordan, Executive Chairman of Cura Leaf, uh, right in the middle of a fascinating element of this crisis and the response, Carol. Yeah. Yeah, no doubt about it. Uh, and I feel like he's coming at it from very different, you know, a lot of perspectives in terms of yeah. keeping a business 
happening and then what the government is doing to kind of help ease his business in this time of crisis. All right, we'll get back to uh, Boris Jordan in just a moment. Let's get back to Charlie Pellet, though, with a check on your top business stories and what's going on with the uh, trading day. 29 minutes, Charlie. Indeed, you know. 29 minutes to go ahead of the closing bell. Stocks at or near the best level of the day right now. Uh, we have got the S&P 500 index. Let's begin right with the numbers, and I'll give you the details in just a moment. But the S&P up 104 right now. That's what you want to know. Higher by 4.3%. The Dow up 1,151 points right now. That is a gain of just about 5.6%. Uh, and the NASDAQ Composite Index, it is pushing higher as well, up 2.5% right now. NASDAQ lagging the rest of the market. It is up by 183 points. Some big names uh, in uh, NASDAQ uh, not moving higher today, uh, especially among the tech sector. So again, the Dow, the S&P, and NASDAQ all rallying. We've got the 10-year right now. It is down 630 seconds uh, with the 10-year yield, 0.86%. Now, what about where this market may be heading? Chris Verone is head of technical analysis at Strategus Research Partners. We've looked at every single bear market rally in history. You very often get 20 to 25 percent advancing. So that gets you to that 28, 28, 50 neighborhood, which I don't think that is a question here at all. Right now, we have got Target shares dropping 6.7%. Target today dumping the full year sales profit and uh, its profit outlook. The forecast that it gave just three weeks ago, even as sales in March have soared, underscoring the difficulty that retailers are facing in navigating the unfolding coronavirus crisis. Again, Target shares, they're tumbling by 6.6%. And Netflix, a lot of people staying home, a lot of people theoretically working from home, but are they watching Netflix? Netflix cut. Customers today suffering outages at a time when coronavirus lockdowns have caused home viewing to surge. The streaming giant says the problem has been resolved. Netflix shares, though, they are lower on a day when the rest of the market's moving higher. Netflix down now by 3.3%. We've got gold down 1%, 16.15 the ounce. West Texas Intermediate crude up 3%, 24.73 a barrel. Again, the 10-year, the yield there, 0.86%. S&P up 110, recapping. That's a gain of 4 and a half percent. I'm Charlie Pellet, and that is a Bloomberg Business Flash. All right, Charlie, thank you so much. We are here with Boris Jordan. He is the Cureleaf Executive Chairman. He's joining us uh, on the phone in Miami. And it was interesting you were talking uh, about your workers. I'm curious, too, as someone who runs a business, understands that there needs to be safety nets for workers. You're seeing some of the bailout programs come along. Um, what's your take on everything that's happening uh, out of Washington uh, and the assistance? I think it's very important uh, for Washington to finally approve this package. I think it's um, uh, important for the workers in the country uh, so that um, we have millions and millions and millions of people that are out of work. I've heard estimates that uh, layoffs could be somewhere between 20 and $30 million over the next quarter. Uh, we need to address that. That would be bigger than even we saw in the Great Depression. And, and I think it's very important the federal government to step up. And uh, we've been waiting now for, you know, for over a week for the federal government to get its act together with this uh, with this bill. I, I'm not, you know, I don't know how much of this bill is going to be available towards uh, workers, uh, um, uh, you know, as, and, and how quickly it will be available. But we're certainly all hopeful that it will be available to workers and to people that are laid off very, very quickly. I mean, Schumer said it's uh, unemployment on steroids. I think the the people that have been laid off in the restaurant industry, the hospitality industry, the airline industry are really hoping uh, right. to receive some assistance here during these difficult times. So, Boris, help us square something, uh, especially given what we said at the top, that, you know, you have a personal experience with this. You know, uh, certainly through your daughter, what it's like here in the New York City area in terms of this virus really ravaging this area. And yet we also, at the same time, have a call on the part of many business people, on the part of the president, to really get back to work. You know, the president talking about Easter. How do you balance those things and how do you look at it uh, as someone who is running a business. Listen, I have to say, it's, it's, I, I would not want to be the president of the United States right now. Um, uh, somebody uh, 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 much smarter than me put it this way. Uh, just imagine he's got two shoulders. On the right shoulder, he's got the medical community, which is telling him uh, you need to, you know, uh, uh, quarantine the country. You need to slow down uh, transportation. You need to stop the virus. Uh, and on the other side, you've got um, the economists uh, uh, that are telling him, you know, if you keep this going much longer, you could bankrupt the country, and that would create much more hardship 
uh, yeah. for the country than uh, what we're doing. And I think the biggest worry I have is the people that are losing their jobs are the people that need them the most. Mm. Uh, and that's what I am concerned about. And, you know, the longer this goes on, the harder it is going to be for uh, the more uh, needed, needy part of our population, the people that are in the, in the, in the, um, uh, you know, retail businesses and the and the and the hospitality industry. Uh, you know, union people. We we really need to look after these people, and so it's a very difficult decision uh, whether we start the economy or not. But I do think they're not going to have much of a choice. At some point, they're going to have to. I hope that the country uses these next two weeks to really quarantine seriously. Uh, I'm more specifically focused on the young population, which in some places isn't taking this very seriously. Yeah. They need to take this seriously. We need to slow the virus down, and then we need to get the country back to work. We are a capitalist, you know, economy, uh, and 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 a capitalist economy cannot survive without being without working. So, well, I think we need to get this country back to work. Um, how fast? I don't want to make that prediction. It's not my. I'm not an expert. Well, it's interesting that you say that because, yeah, the younger population, we've certainly seen uh, New York City Mayor uh, Bill de Blasio talk about it, New York Governor uh, Andrew Cuomo, uh, you know, threatening to shut down parks and things just to kind of stop it. You you have a younger community, right, who are working at, um, you know, your various retail outlets. Um, what are they saying about that? I mean, obviously, there's a tremendous amount of nervousness. Um, they understand, uh, you know, the people that work in the cannabis industry are very, very dedicated uh, and they and they and they truly believe in the product that they sell, and so we've had a tremendous, uh, um, you know, sort of sort of effort uh, on behalf of our employees to stay there and to service our patients. Um, we're trying to do everything we can to keep them safe, whether it's breaking them up into teams, keeping some home, keeping some at work, whether it's curbside, whether it's masks and gloves and sanitizers. Um, we're doing everything possible to keep our employees safe, our customers safe. But we have to continue to provide the service. I mean, CVS does it. Uh, we're doing it. Uh, these are our essential services for people that need the products and so that we have to do it. And I have to say all of our employees have really, really stepped up to the plate to make sure that this happens. All right. We're going to leave it there. Chris Jordan, thank you so much. So really good much. to catch up with you. Executive Chairman of Cure Relief, joining us on the phone from Miami. Best to your family, especially your daughter, as she recovers. Uh, you know, this is personally hitting a yeah. lot of people, mm -hmm. uh, Carol. It's rare, I think, these days to talk to someone who's not one or two steps removed, uh, you know, from someone who's been taken ill uh, by this virus. We're going to continue to talk about that, the markets. We're going to close the market with you in just a few minutes. In the meantime, let's get back to world and national news headlines with Bob Moon. Carol, he didn't mention Donald Trump, at least not by name. But the Director General of the World Health Organization is warning against the temptation to rush back to what might seem to be normal life, only to condemn many more people to their deaths. The last thing any country needs is to open schools and businesses only to be forced to close them again because of a resurgence. Aggressive measures to find, isolate, test, treat, and trace are not only the best and fastest way out of extreme social and economic restrictions, they are also the best way to prevent them. Dr. Tedros Adhanom Ghebreyesus says now is not the time to squander the very reason for taking such action in the first place. Countries which have locked down their populations to prevent the spread of the virus need to use the time to find and attack it, expand, train, and deploy their health care and public health workforces, implement systems to find every suspected case, and ramp up testing. Ahead of the Senate vote today on a $2 billion coronavirus rescue package, Senate Minority Leader Chuck Schumer says Democrats fought hard for provisions that include what he calls unemployment insurance on steroids. Had we not asked for the Republican Party to recognize us by not going forward on those first two votes, this bill would have been much worse. Our actions made it much better. The White House and Senate leaders announced agreement today on an unparalleled $2 trillion emergency bill to rush aid to businesses and people. Global News 24 hours a day. I'm Bob Moon. Message and data rates may apply. TNC and privacy terms can be found at babble.com slash terms. Please don't text and drive. Have you wanted to speak a new language, but you thought it'd be too hard? 
or take too much time? Then try Babbel for free by texting EXPLORE to 64000. In just 15 minutes a day, you'll be on your way to speaking a new language in just a few weeks. And right now, you can try Babbel for free. Babbel starts out teaching you words and phrases by matching them with pictures. You won't believe how easy the interactive program is. Soon the sentences get a little bigger, and before you know it, you're having simulated conversations voiced by native speakers. And because Babbel is crafted by language experts and uses the spaced repetition method, in just 10 to 15 minutes a day, you'll be speaking the language of your choice with real confidence. With Babbel, you can speak a language. Just text EXPLORE to 64000 and start your first lesson in the language of your choice for free. Download the Babbel app or text EXPLORE to 64000 and try it for free. Text E-X-P-L-O-R-E to 64000. Vatsal Shah is Senior Project Engineer at Mott McDonald, a global engineering consultancy with more than 16,000 employees. He earned his PhD at New Jersey Institute of Technology and as an adjunct professor is helping NJIT students explore or emerging technologies. My focus is renewable markets, emerging technologies, the idea of floating cities. What are we doing to develop that? What will happen to the city in the water? We're going to have waves hitting it. You're going to have solar. How are you going to you know, develop plants? How are you going to develop vegetation and farming? That sort of thought process happens at NGIT. We actually plan out what will the city look like? How do we develop that? So in 10 years, we're actually ready to take on those challenges when we have our first development in the water. NGIT also has been doing a lot of work in self-healing materials. So taking the polymers and the, the new material that we have in our material sciences departments and putting them into things like concrete, things like steel, reinforcing our soil. NJIT, New Jersey Institute of Technology. Learn more at njit.edu. The happy family of three were about to welcome a new member. That's right, they were finally getting a dog. <laughs> Buy on eBay, dog bed from £12. First... They had to make a few adjustments. Sell white rug. And prepare the kids for the reality of owning a pet. Buy biodegradable poop bags from under six pounds. Everyone instantly fell in love with little Rocky. Unfortunately, little Rocky fell in love with a cushion. Buy, sell, eBay. Delivery costs may apply. Coronavirus is affecting us all. During this difficult time, we're helping critical workers to make essential journeys by public transport. So, from Monday the 23rd of March, TfL will be operating a gradually reduced service on our network. Some stations will be closed so that we can keep key stations open. Night tube and night overground services have already stopped running, but our extensive night bus service will continue. The Waterloo and City Line is now closed. We will keep you updated as our services change. Search TfL. Imagine winning 10 grand. Yes! With Set for Life, you could win 10 grand every month for 30 years. Get in! Amazing! Woo! Yes! Sweet! Unbelievable! Play Thursday and you can make every month amazing with Set for Life and the National Lottery. Your numbers make amazing happen. Prize may be capped. Rules, procedures, and game-specific rules apply. Players must be 16 or over. Want to know a quick, easy way to see if your favorite podcasts have a new episode available? Just go to the home screen on your TuneIn app and see the latest editions under the Your New Episode section. Happy listening. It's tune in sports on this day. March 25th, 1972. UCLA men's basketball wins its sixth consecutive national basketball title. UCLA has won its sixth consecutive NCAA basketball championship and pandemonium reigns as delirious UCLA players are congratulated by their Florida State rivals as well as their fans. To listen to conversations breaking down the moments just like this, click on sports to be part of the discussion on TuneIn. Leave it to the New York Times to make the most intelligent pop music podcast out there. Welcome to the New York Times Popcast. On the Popcast, the Times music staff gets together for a weekly roundtable on the hottest topics in popular music. From award show autopsies and reactions to new releases to difficult to process scandals and emerging themes in the music landscape, hear distinguished music critics share their perspectives on the latest music news, songs, albums, and artists of note on the New York Times Popcast. Search and favorite Popcast to join the conversation. That's why we continually optimize SCI's global operating platform. If your business requires greater agility, our advanced technology, integrated best-in-class systems, and multi-asset expertise can be your catalyst for business transformation. With SEI Investment Manager Services, you lead the charge in a competitive marketplace. Learn more at seic.com slash change. 
business is constantly evolving. Is your financial printer evolving to keep ahead of the curve? At Command Financial, we are redefining financial printing by providing industry-leading expertise, leveraging technology, and honing processes and best practices. Every day, Command helps SEC registrants, as well as members of their working groups, including securities attorneys and investment bankers, prepare, file, and disseminate regulatory and disclosure documents, such as registration statements, M&A documents, and mutual fund prospectuses and reports. Command provides a full range of services to help you effectively complete your deal, meet your disclosure requirements, and achieve your shareholder communications objectives. Visit our website at commandfinancial.com and learn how we're evolving, not only with the times, but also with your business requirements. Command Financial, redefining financial printing. Markets, headlines, and breaking news 24 hours a day at Bloomberg.com, the Bloomberg Business app, and on Quick Take by Bloomberg. This is a Bloomberg Business Flash. On Bloomberg World Headquarters, I'm Charlie Pellet, developing story out of Apple. According to the Nikkei News Service, Apple weighing, delaying the 5G iPhone by months. Apple shares are trading higher. However, they have seen a big drop in the past couple of minutes. Still on the plus side, though, Apple shares up by 1.7% at 250 5112. Again, Apple weighing a delay in the 5G iPhone by months. This according to Nikkei. We've got 13 minutes to go ahead of the closing bell. And the Dow, the S&P, and NASDAQ, they're all surging, holding on to gains off our session highs. But nonetheless, it is an update here with a 3.2% jump in the S&P 500 index, higher by 77 points at 25.24. The Dow up 903 points, up by 4.4%. And NASDAQ NASDAQ is up 81. That is a gain of 1.1%. Tenure down 230 seconds. Yield on the tenure, 0.85%. Gold up 3%. Uh, gold actually is lower by 1.1%, 16.14. It is West Texas Intermediate Crude that is up 3.1% right now, 24.75 a barrel. So again, recapping here, S&P 500 index holding on to gains ahead of the closing bell, up 72 points, a gain there of 3%. I'm Charlie Pellet, and that is a Bloomberg Business Flash. I'm driving in my car I turn on the radio How about you let me drive? Oh, no, 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 no Who's gonna drive you home? Honey, please, I'll do the driving Drive on Excuse me, I want to drive Just drive, baby It's the question that drives us Drive to the Close. That funky music will drive us till the dawn. On Bloomberg Radio. All right, it is time for the Drive to the Close. I do want to mention a headline crossing. Uh, the President's Chief Economic Advisor, Larry Kudlow, saying the Senate aid bill drafting error to be worked out. So it sounds like they're still doing um, crossing the T's, dotting the I's here, uh, and waiting for a vote on that massive $2 trillion bailout program uh, coming from the U.S. Congress. So we'll continue to monitor those headlines. In the meantime, it is time for the drive to the close. John Levito is with us, co-chief investment officer of Global Fixed Income over at American Century Investments, $132 billion in assets, I believe, overall under management. Uh, I think there's roughly about 40 or $41 billion in terms of fixed income. John joining us on the phone from New Jersey. John, nice to have you back with us. Um, talk to us about this environment. What have you had to change in terms of strategies and outlook? Well, that's uh, great to be with you, and uh, good afternoon. I mean, obviously, you know, in this environment, in terms of how you, you how you cope with it, is the number one thing you want to cope with is two things: is the volatility, and then the liquidity. Obviously, the uh, volatility is to an extreme that you know you, you don't see very often. We last saw this back in 08, 09, and in a lot of sense, it's it's, it's worse than 08, 09 because the speed of change that we saw here relative to 10 years ago. And then the second thing is the, is the liquidity. You know, liquidity in, um, in fixed income uh, over the last month has really dried up across all sectors, whether it's, you know, corporate bonds, securitized, and we've even seen it from time to time in the government security. So that's really been the main challenge is dealing with the volatility and the liquidity. I should say the lack of liquidity. Right, right. So speaking of lack of liquidity, uh, John, talk to us about the Fed. I mean, what a remarkable couple weeks as we've watched the Fed uh, step in in ways that I think even for seasoned watchers like yourself, 
it still seems extraordinary. What's the net impact for an investor of the Fed's actions? Well, I think the uh, the big message to take from what the Fed has done, and as you, as you said, right, this is incredible what they've done, and it's really the speed of what they've done. And now we know back in 08, 09, they stepped in and did quite a bit back then, too. But what we're seeing now is really even at a more rapid pace. And so they're really touching on all aspects of the market. Well, obviously, bringing rates down close to zero is the most obvious. Uh, unlimited QE, but all the uh, various programs they put in place to help with liquidity around money markets, credit securitized, these are really, uh, you know, uh, you know, very aggressive steps. Um, you know, obviously, initially, I would say the reaction was a bit muted, but I think between, uh, you know, the, the fiscal action and then the accumulation of action that we've seen from a monetary policy standpoint, it is, it is at least um, stabilizing for the, you know, for, for now over the last couple of days uh, markets a little bit. But, you know, there's a, it, it's, it's, it's very, very early. Yeah, it is very early, and I do wonder about, you know, whether enough is being done to shore up the situation. Are you at all, um, John, nervous about what's a health crisis initially becoming a financial crisis? Well, certainly you need to be, right? Because, you know, obviously this is unprecedented in terms of what we're, in terms of what we're seeing with regard to a health crisis. And if you look at the stress that it's putting on financial conditions across various sectors, right, you can look at sectors like, you know, travel and leisure, energy and so on. These companies are going to, you know, many companies are going to come under a lot of stress, particularly if this lingers, you know, into the summer. Uh, and so you, you need to go and look through security by security in terms of the health of names and companies that you own to see just how, uh, you know, how they, you know, how they can fare, you know, in, in, in what is certainly going to be a recessionary period. And the question is just how deep and how long. Yeah, I mean, one thing I do want to point out, uh, Carol, and I think uh, you just tweeted about it, is that you're seeing stocks well off their highs, uh, taking a massive leg down. Yeah. We did just have a, a headline cross uh, that uh, Senator Sanders, Bernie Sanders, of course, uh, running for the Democratic nomination, still threatening to hold up stimulus in response to GOP. So uh, this is a little bit of a last minute uh, Gambit, uh, as it were, we are going to keep watching this very closely, obviously, but the market reacting presumably to that uncertainty right there. And, I mean, if you look at the chart, as I'm guessing you are, Carol, you just see it really drop. I mean, up uh, as much as 4, 4.5% of the S&P, now up about 1, 1.5%. Right. And there's another headline that Larry Kudlow is saying the House will pass the Senate stimulus package. But, you know, looking at what's going on on the equity side of things, um, it's certainly been very telling in the last 10 minutes here of just seeing stocks. Right now we've got, as you said, Jason, uh, the NASDAQ in negative territory, but we've definitely uh, pulled back here. So we'll have to see what happens here. So, John, what are you telling clients? What What's your advice here when there is still such a lack of visibility? Uh, we still see fighting among our U.S. lawmakers in a time of crisis. Um, what are you advising clients at this point? Well, I think, you know, when you get into situations like this where there's a lot of uncertainty, a lot of volatility, and as we mentioned, a lack of, a lack of, a lack of liquidity, I think really the what we advise clients and, frankly, what we advise ourselves is to take a step back and to take, you know, look at the sort of the medium to long term in terms of where do you think you want to be and where do you think you... Where, where do you think markets are going? Because it's very, very difficult in very fast markets, to be frank, to make, uh, to make you know, um, to make decisions which are, you know, uh, you know, easy to enact, you know, given the lack of liquidity. So what we do is, and what we advise clients is, is what do you think is going to happen over the next three, six, nine months? Not what do you think is going to happen over the next three, three days or three weeks? Mm -hmm. Because you, it's, it's how you come out of this is what is, is what's important. And yes, you want to manage your risks in the short term. Don't get me wrong, but it's you know looking to see where the winners and losers are going to be over the medium term. And if you do that, that you'll you'll be fine. And it's just to stay calm and to stick to your process and to your long term goals. All right. Good advice. John Levito is co-chief investment officer of Global Fixed Income for American Century Investments, joining us on the phone in New Jersey. Stay safe and healthy. All right. Well, we have had quite a last few minutes here in the trade, uh, yeah. Carol. Equity uh, trade in particular. Exactly. Uh, back and forth, certainly 
happening down in Washington as, you know, we started the day, as they say, sort of at the two-yard line, and maybe we're now, uh, you know, half a yard or a couple foot line in terms of getting uh, getting the proverbial congressional uh, touchdown here. Well, and, and just look at, you know, in the last hour or so, we've got Apple weighing delaying the 5G iPhone by months. Nikkei reporting that GM company's ratings may be cut to junk by Moody's. Who would have thought that we would have ever, you know, uh, a month ago seen headlines like this? And then, as you said, you know, in this time of crisis, we're looking for lawmakers to get something done. And if it's getting too complicated, let's simplify it and get the assistance to businesses, to individuals, and let's start breaking it down by parts because something needs to be done because once the economy stops, it's really hard to get it going again. You're listening to Bloomberg Business Week right here on Bloomberg Radio. Coronavirus is affecting us all. During this difficult time, we're helping critical workers to make essential journeys by public transport. So from Monday the 23rd of March, TfL will be operating a gradually reduced service on our network. Some stations will be closed so that we can keep key stations open. Night tube and night overground services have already stopped running, but our extensive night bus service will continue. The Waterloo and City Line is now closed. We will keep you updated as our services change. Search TfL. Let's tune in sports on this day. March 25th, 1972. UCLA men's basketball wins its sixth consecutive national basketball title. UCLA has won its sixth consecutive NCAA basketball championship. And pandemonium reigns as delirious UCLA players are congratulated by their Florida State rivals as well as their fans. To listen to conversations breaking down the moments just like this, click on sports to be part of the discussion on TuneIn. A lot of people aren't aware that TuneIn lets you listen to the same terrestrial stations that you pick up on your FM AM dial, except you can hear them from anywhere. To see all the stations broadcasting in your area, find the local radio section on the home screen. Keep it local with TuneIn. Leave it to the New York Times to make the most intelligent pop music podcast out there. Welcome to the New York Times Popcast. On the Popcast, the Times music staff gets together for a weekly roundtable on the hottest topics in popular music. From award show autopsies and reactions to new releases to difficult to process scandals and emerging themes in the music landscape, hear distinguished music critics share their perspectives on the latest music news, songs, albums, and artists of note on the New York Times Popcast. Search and favorite Popcast to join the conversation. Financial capital of the world, 24 hours a day at Bloomberg.com, on the Bloomberg Business app, and on Quick Take by Bloomberg. This is Bloomberg Radio. Markets, headlines, and breaking news, 24 hours a day at Bloomberg.com, the Bloomberg Business app, and on Quick Take by Bloomberg. This is a Bloomberg Business Flash. From Bloomberg World Headquarters, I'm Charlie Pellet. Turned out to be a mixed day on Wall Street with the Dow. He both higher, NASDAQ lower, but the S&P did post its first back-to-back gain since the coronavirus crisis began. Investors are awaiting unprecedented government spending packages aimed at countering the hit from the pandemic. But we did see a late session fade. Again, an update with the S&P 500 index climbing 27 points to end the Wednesday session at 24.74, higher by 1.1%. The Dow up 482 points with a gain of 2.3%, again finishing well off session highs. NASDAQ fell 33 points, down by five-tenths of one percent. The 10-year up 132nd with a yield of 0.84 percent. There's evidence the housing market is stalling at the start of the spring buying session. And with more on that story, here's Bloomberg's Vinny Del Judice. Loan applications for buying and refinancing homes are down, falling last week by the most in a decade. It's coronavirus shutdowns along with Wall Street gyrations that bumped interest rates higher. Evidence of weakness in manufacturing Manufacturing is piling up. Orders for business equipment fell in February as the supply chain tightened. Vinny Dow, Judice Bloomberg Radio. Boeing drove today's gains in the Dow Jones Industrial Average. Boeing said to be a big beneficiary in the stimulus package. Reuters also reporting that Boeing plans to restart production of its globally grounded 737 MAX aircraft by May. Boeing shares did advance today by 24.2%. Airline shares also rallied today on optimism about stimulus. Delta 
Delta, for example, up 15.8%. American Airlines Group up by 10.5%. Southwest Airlines up by 4.4%. JetBlue higher today by 20.6%. Gold down 1.3%, 16.10 the ounce. And West Texas Intermediate Crude gained 2.1%, 24.53 a barrel. So again, recapping, a mixed trading day with the S&P up 27, higher by 1.1%. The Dow up 2.3, NASDAQ down 0.5. I'm Charlie Pellet. That is a Bloomberg Business Flash. Your next move will be your last. Nobody move a muscle. Damn, Shippy, you got some move. Time is money. Let's go. Come on, move it. Bloomberg Business Week, Movers and Shakers, with Carol Mazur and Jason Kelly on Bloomberg Radio. Yes, indeed. Time to take a look at some of the stocks on the move in the Wednesday trade. Carol Master along with Jason Kelly as we await, let's not forget, Micron Technology. Those earnings will be out after the They're closing out, bell. actually. Should we do them real quick? Yeah, let's do it. Uh, Micron Technology and uh, breaking down those numbers. You got it. Yeah, so the redhead is uh, second quarter revenue coming in at $4.8 billion. Carol, that's a beat. Uh, analysts had expected $4.69 billion. Uh, seeing third quarter revenue come in at $4.6 six to five point two so at least they're making a forecast that's sort of interesting yeah. uh, and on the bottom line also a beat in the second quarter adjusted dps coming in at 45 cents the estimate there had been for 36 cents stocks up to point three point four percent a four percent here yeah. in the after hours so the stock is definitely getting a pop and we'll break it down with our non Srinivasan uh, and really get some insight into what's going on in that sector because that's very yeah, key looking forward to that. in terms of the world. Big picture, folks, 361 names in the S&P 500 higher today, 144 lower. Two names that caught our attention include those that might get some assistance as a result of that expected government, massive government stimulus program. We're talking about Norwegian Cruise Lines and Royal Caribbean. Th- those stocks each up 23% today. They're your third and fourth biggest gainer in the S&P 500. Then Boeing expected to get some assistance. That's your number two gainer in the S&P 500, Jason. That was up 24%. So any of those companies looking to benefit uh, potentially or hoping to benefit as a result of uh, um, some help from the government, we saw them really take off today. Well, and it's interesting, too, that the the trade up for those cruise liners is not about like, hey, everybody's going to go on a cruise again. No. It's that they're going to get a lot of help from the government. I'm not saying the B word, but they are going to get some significant financial well, assistance, and you do wonder what the long-term uh, impact of that is. It's a bailout with strings, right, yeah. according to what we're expecting in that program. We're still waiting details and hoping to hear something from the government. Keep in mind that Boeing, at its highs today, was up 30 Seven percent closing the day of twenty four percent, which is what we saw in the overall market. So yeah. those expectations scaled back uh, dramatically as we saw those major equity indices uh, really kind of pull off some of their highs. Uh, one name I wanted to make sure we talked about because we didn't get a chance to talk about sure. it as much uh, yesterday is Nike mm-hmm. uh, coming out with some numbers that uh, impressed folks yesterday. Uh, that stock up nine point two percent today. It had been up, as you say. This is the story for a lot of folks. Uh, had been up as much as 15%, uh, but still closing the day with a nice gain. And the company did point out that at-home exercise apps are helping drive their revenue. Listen, everybody that I normally work out and go to a class with, they're all sending me these online classes. So it's really fascinating. Got to mention Target. It's your number one decliner in the S&P 500, down 9.5%. The company basically dumping its 2020 guidance. It's suspending stock buybacks uh, amid all the uncertainty on the coronavirus. And that's interesting because because we've been hearing too from those from retailers saying there's a lot of shopping going on as people yeah. have been stocking up their cupboards. But nonetheless, this is a company that's saying I don't know what's going to happen in 2020. All right, volatility. The VIX uh, up just a touch, uh, coming in at uh, up two and a half, closing at 63.20. This is Bloomberg. All right, Dave, you're up. Uh, hi, uh, my name is Dave. Wilson, where are you? Wilson! Just what do you think you're doing, Dave? We're going for a price on Wilson. Open up the door, it's Dave! Who? Dave! Hey, Mr. Wilson! All right, Dave Wilson, stock's editor, back with us for a double shot. Let's start with your chart. 
Absolutely. You know, Carol just mentioned Target and how they're taking steps. They're going to scale back their business. Uh, don't know where their earnings are going this coming year. They're also one of more than 30 companies in the S&P 500 that have suspended their stock buyback programs. And what makes that particularly interesting is the binge that preceded it. And we had some numbers yesterday out of S&P Dow Jones that captured those. If you look at 2018 and 2019, companies in the S&P 500 index spent more than one and a half trillion dollars on their shares. Uh, you got to figure over $700 billion for last year, even though it came down from 2018 when you had the uh, federal tax cuts that companies took advantage of, used a lot of the savings to go out and buy their shares. And uh, it, it's quite the turnaround. That's really what the chart captures. It goes all the way back to 2000, so it gives you some perspective on just how much of a bonanza it's been in terms of buybacks. If you want to know more, folks, send me an email. I'll get you the chart, the explanation that goes with it, and everything I do going forward. The email address is dwilson at bloomberg.net. That's dwilson at bloomberg.net. So true, Dave. It's become a normal way of doing business for those big publicly held companies. All right, let's talk about your stock of the day. Ticker is ATI. That's right. Allegheny Technologies is a supplier of stainless steel, titanium, and other specialty metals, uh, products that are used in airplanes, spacecraft, t- power turbines, electronics, and medical equipment. Allegheny Technologies was formed in 1996 through a merger of Allegheny Ludlam and Teledyne. Uh, the company's ticker is ATI, as you mentioned, Carol. Uh, Allegheny Technologies peaked the record in 2007, near the end of a bull market in U.S. stocks. They tumbled in the bear market that followed, never came close to recouping those losses. And this year, they've been down as much as 76%. Allegheny Technologies cut its loss today thanks to a contract extension with the United Steelworkers Union. The extension will last until next February and cover 1,300 employees or about 16% of the company's workforce. Terms of the deal call for union members to receive bonuses of 500 hours. Now, in response to the agreement, Allegheny Technology shares jumped 30 and a half percent. That was the stock's biggest gain since January 2017. All right, Dave Wilson, thank you so much. You are listening to Bloomberg Business Week. Carol, just taking a look at, uh, man, that trade at the end well, really listen, fell off. Matt Maley, who's a, a friend of our show, a friend of Bloomberg Radio, he was on earlier today uh, over at Miller Tabak. He said, you know, don't forget that what probably brought down the markets on top of the Sanders headline, but also that news from Apple. That's a yeah. big, big, you know, certainly um, weight Potential to the market, delay the overall on the 5G market. phone, right? Yeah, yeah exactly. Exactly. So that's probably what helped take it down. All right. Let's uh, head over to Ed Baxter in San Francisco. He's got an update on World National News. Hi, Ed. Yeah, hi, Jason. Uh, after Senate leadership reached agreement and promised swift action, three conservative Republicans, including Lindsey Graham, have stepped up to say unemployment benefits should not exceed what a person is making on the job. You're literally incentivizing taking people out of the workforce at a time when we need critical infrastructure supplied with workers. And so Bloomberg's Kevin Cirilli says it slows things down. They are effective and they're necessary, and the evidence suggests... That is uh, Andrew Cuomo, the uh, the governor of New York City. New York City, by the way, has uh, closed down many major streets and avenues uh, to create separation there. Uh, so let's get to Kevin. Kevin says basically uh, that it is going to slow things down in the process and that it should be done by the end of the week. Now, New York City closing down some streets to vehicle traffic. Governor Andrew Cuomo says it could be some time, but he does say separation. Works. They are effective and they're necessary, and the evidence suggests at this point that they have slowed the hospitalizations. And this is everything. And he also says Easter is far too soon to open things up. Meanwhile, the group of seven met today, and Secretary of State Mike Pompeo says the main topic was China. Everyone of the nations that was at that meeting this morning was deeply aware of the disinformation campaign that the Chinese Communist Party is engaged in to try and deflect from what has really taken place here. He says the pandemic began in China. The president, meanwhile, is now saying he will no longer call it the Chinese virus. In San Francisco, I'm Ed Baxter. This is Bloomberg Radio. 
two people who are as fascinated by the markets as you are. What's your sense of the competitive landscape in the cloud business? Lisa Abramowitz. People are talking about potential regulatory pressure. And Paul Sweeney. Are you seeing flows into ESG ETFs? Bloomberg Markets. What's your main conversation today with some of these corporate executives? Weekday mornings at 10 Eastern. They're spending a lot of money there. On Bloomberg Radio, the Bloomberg Business App, and BloombergRadio.com. Bloomberg, the world is listening. To protect her home and family in a disaster, Karen was willing to wade through water, mud, and insurance paperwork. Yeah, I can do this. You go, Karen. By simply understanding and updating what her insurance covers and doesn't cover now, she'll be better prepared no matter when disaster strikes. Learn other simple ways to protect your home and family before a natural disaster at ready.gov. That's ready.gov. A message from FEMA and the Ad Council. In-depth analysis, concise reporting, need-to-know global business news. Around the world and across the markets, Bloomberg connects the dots for decision makers. Stay on top of today's headlines. Follow big breakthroughs in tech. Understand the latest political issues. See how the world's wealthiest are spending their money. Track what's happening in the markets and much more. Subscribe today to Bloomberg, the global standard for business reporting. Get it all at Bloomberg.com slash subscriptions. Not completing high school is more of a social thing than it was an academic thing. Even though all these years have passed, I still had that longing to have my diploma. At age 30, Carissa finished her high school diploma. If you're even considering getting your high school diploma, you can do it. No one gets a diploma alone. If you're thinking of finishing your high school diploma, you have help. Find free adult education classes near you at finishyourdiploma.org. That's finishyourdiploma.org. Brought to you by the Dollar General Literacy Foundation and the Ad Council. Cheating or competing? When it comes to business, do you know the difference? Say you run into a competitor at an industry event. You get to chatting about business. How are you both doing? All pretty standard. Now talk turns to margins. Maybe someone mentions prices. Maybe you agree to stop undercutting each other. Still just business, right? Wrong. Coordinating prices with your competitors is called price fixing. It's cheating and illegal. And you could be facing big fines or even prison when you get caught. Search cheating or competing to check your business practices before we check them for you. Brought to you by the CMA. The Competition and Markets Authority. Imagine winning 10 grand. Yes! With Set for Life, you could win 10 grand every month for 30 years. Get in! Amazing! Woo! Yes! Sweet! Unbelievable! Play Thursday and you could make every month amazing with Set for Life and the National Lottery. Your numbers make amazing happen. Prize may be capped. Rules, procedures, and game-specific rules apply. Players must be 16 or over. In case you didn't know, TuneIn lets you listen to the same radio stations you pick up on your home or car radio. Except you can hear them from anywhere. If you want to find a station from somewhere else in the world, navigate to the By Location section under Browse. Keep exploring with TuneIn. Leave it to the New York Times to make the most intelligent pop music podcast out there. Welcome to the New York Times Popcast. On the Popcast, the Times music staff gets together for a weekly roundtable on the hottest topics in popular music. From award show autopsies and reactions to new releases to difficult to process scandals and emerging themes in the music landscape, hear distinguished music critics share their perspectives on the latest music news, songs, albums, and artists of note on the New York Times Popcast. Search and favorite Popcast to join the conversation. It's tune in sports on this day. March 25th, 1972. UCLA men's basketball wins its sixth consecutive national basketball title. UCLA has won its sixth consecutive NCAA basketball championship. And pandemonium reigns as delirious UCLA players are congratulated by their Florida State rivals as well as their fans. To listen to conversations breaking down the moments just like this, click on sports to be part of the discussion on TuneIn. On this week's On the Media, for years, U.S. preppers have invested time and money getting ready to tackle imaginary doomsday scenarios. So... You can't make up a story anymore. It doesn't work. We've got coronavirus, and it's not hypothetical. It's actually happening. Don't miss this week's On the Media from WNYC. Listen to the On the Media podcast from WNYC Studios on TuneIn today. Babbel starts out teaching you words and phrases by matching them with pictures. You won't believe how easy the interactive program is. 
Soon the sentences get a little bigger, and before you know it, you're having simulated conversations voiced by native speakers. And because Babbel is crafted by language experts and uses the spaced repetition method, in just 10 to 15 minutes a day, you'll be speaking the language of your choice with real confidence. With Babbel, you can speak a language. Just text EXPLORE to 64000 and start your first lesson in the language of your choice for free. Download the Babbel app or text EXPLORE to 64000 and try it for free. Text E-X-P-L-O-R-E to 64000. Are you interested in a challenging and exciting career? One where you can be part of solving complex challenges across industries and geographies. Bloomberg's ever-expanding technology, data, news, and media services foster innovation, empower clients, and offer nearly limitless opportunities for career growth. Visit Bloomberg.com slash careers today to view our current job opportunities. Bloomberg LP is an equal opportunity employer. The address once again is Bloomberg.com slash careers. Hey, y'all. Jeff Foxworthy here. Now, if you've ever found yourself repeating the same thing over and over for 75 years, you might be Smokey Bear. Only you can prevent wildfires. That's why I'm filling in for Smokey to switch things up, because there's a lot more to say. And I should know, because my grandfather was a firefighter, and one of the things he taught me is that the people that love the outdoors the most are often the ones accidentally starting wildfires, which means... Always (laughs) B-Y-O-B. No, bring your own bucket to the campfire. And be extra careful with things like burning yard trimmings. Don't just walk away, or chances are you might be starting a wildfire. So for the love of the outdoors, go to SmokeyBear.com to learn more about wildfire prevention. Brought to you by the U.S. Forest Service, your state forester, and the Ad Council. Markets, headlines, and breaking news 24 hours a day at Bloomberg.com, the Bloomberg Business app, and on Quick Take by Bloomberg. This is a Bloomberg Business Flash. On Bloomberg World Headquarters, I'm Charlie Pellet. A mixed finish. It was an update for the S&P and the Dow, a down day for the NASDAQ Composite Index. Bottom line, stocks posted their first back-to-back gain since February 12th as investors awaited unprecedented government spending packages aimed at countering the hit from the coronavirus pandemic. But stocks Stocks did fade in the final 30 minutes of trading. S&P up 28 points, a gain of 1.1%. The Dow Jones Industrial Average finishing the session at 21,200, up by 495 points, up 2.4%. And again, NASDAQ down 5 tenths of 1%, lower by 33 points. The 10-year, the yield 0.85%. Gold down 1.4%. Today's 1609 the ounce. And West Texas Intermediate Crude up 1.3%, 24 32 a barrel. Recapping, the Dow, the S&P both higher, NASDAQ lower, S&P up 28, a gain of 1.1%. I'm Charlie Pelleton. That is a Bloomberg Business Flash. Charlie, thanks so much. You are listening to Bloomberg Business Week. Well, one of those names that we look at very closely when they report is Micron Technologies, MU, MU, we like to call it. And we love to talk about it with Anand Srinivasan. He looks after the chip sector and the networking sector for Bloomberg Intelligence. Joining us on the phone from New Jersey, Anand, we haven't had a chance to talk to you in a while. First of all, you're doing okay? Family's good? Everybody's great. Thank you very much for asking. Are you getting out to run at all? Not so much, no. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but, you know, one of the downsides of the pandemic is um, uh, it's been a volatile market, and we are uh, particularly focused on both the demand and the supply side of the equation for yeah. companies like Micron, yeah. Yeah, so talk to us about what Micron said, because investors uh, like it so far. Stock's up about 7% in the aftermarket. What would you hear? So one of the one of the things that we have always maintained is one leg of the stool from a spending perspective for chip makers has been the cloud uh, platform guys, and they tend to binge and they tend to uh, go into famine mode. So uh, the binge is continuing, and it may even be widening uh, because the pandemic has driven a lot of uh, people to disparate locations, uh, making use of, of the cloud. So. That particular leg of the demand is doing well. We expect that to continue. Um, and then in the near term, we're seeing some demand come in from uh, work from home installations of various 
consumer premise equipment, be it PCs or peripheral devices, which have uh, amounts of DRAM and NAND memory in them. So that is also driving um, uh, driving uptake. So that I think that should be a little bit more temporary, but both of these trends should continue for the first three calendar quarters, if you may, of 2020. Uh, but it won't be as you get towards the second half, it won't be able to offset the impact of weaker smartphones. Yeah. So, no, go ahead. I'm so sorry. So what you're seeing right now is sort of a relief uh, a little bit that it wasn't as bad as it could have been. Mm. Yeah, I mean, the stock's up more than 7% here in the after. So I don't know. Then having said that, Anon, what would you want to ask these guys on a conference call right now? Uh, I mean, one of the things that we, have, we already have the slide deck from the company, and uh, they seem to be maintaining sort of the same trajectory of uh, um, bid growth for both uh, DRAM and the NAND side. Pricing seems to be cooperating. The One of the things that we don't know yet is how big of a demand impact could there be in uh, calendar quarter two and calendar quarter three, particularly as people get um, more and more people are sheltered in place. Um, and, and that's going to affect consumer devices. I think the impact of that uh, it will be sussed, um, will be, um, management will be pushed pretty hard on. So that's one series of questions. The other, uh, which they seem to be indicating already, which is that um, what happens to outlays for uh, supply expansion over the next three, four, six quarters? And I think a, a prudent view might be is let's trim CapEx a little bit. Let's wait and see what happens before we commit to expanding our factories and putting more supply out there. And so how does this track? This is a question I ask you every quarter, Anand, so pardon mm-hmm. my uh, predictability. Um, but how does this track with what you're hearing from the rest of the big chip names? And, and what do you hear from, you know, this is a sector we watch very closely, uh, Given all that it tells us about enterprise demand, consumer demand, supply chains, all of it. Yeah, I think that um, um, our, uh, I, Micron's um, views, and positive as they might be, might be a touch jaded from the fact that there's, there's so much of this ebullience is coming from the cloud, right? Mm. So what I'd like to be able to do is look at isolated pillars, people who are exposed only to one versus the other, to see... Um, how one particular segment is faring relative to the other um, without sort of mixing mixing the two um, components, if you may. But right now, one component is doing well. My fear is that we haven't seen the worst of it, mm-hmm. right? So I think the next two, three quarters, particularly from a demand side, um, I think will be, um, will be really telling um, when the consumer goes dark um, and... You know, a lot of people um, get laid off and discretionary spending goes down. Are you going to go out there and buy that $850 phone or a $1,000 phone? And that's 25% of semiconductor uh, consumption, if you may, the mobile phone business. So that's going to be a really telling aspect of um, yeah. um, how generally stocks in the area operate. On the upside, um, margin profiles might actually improve because that's one area where margins are kind of weakish for hmm. component suppliers. I feel like that's a reality check, right? Yeah. In terms yeah. of the industry, what? Go ahead, please. No, I, I think I think that um, uh, one of the things that we did um, early on, it, it was just a China issue. It was just a supply issue, right? right? That was the first read. Yeah. That very quickly we progressed to okay, China demands offline. And from that, we very aggressively took the view that we took a cleaver to all 17 of our models and took down sales numbers. One of the byproducts, and I think this hasn't been sussed out as much, is that when you underload your factories, your fixed costs go up and your utilization is uh, lower, so your margins actually fall. So the EPS impact is actually pretty substantial. On top of that, there's an optic issue around not buying back stock because that may be viewed as unfavorable in this kind of environment. So if you don't do that, you don't have that booing as well. So you have weak sales caused by weak demand globally, and then you have underloading, which hits your margin. And then your EPS growth trajectory, which will be on a weaker trajectory relative to your sales decline. And on top of that, you don't have as much buyback uh, power to deal with. Right. 
This All is right. why we love you. Uh, I know. Smart. You're the best. So Crazy smart. smart. Anand Trinavasan uh, looking after the chip and networking sectors for Bloomberg Intelligence. Joining us on the phone from New Jersey. Also, that gift he gave us of the BI hoodie really coming in handy in this work know. from home times. I, I know. Love Bloomberg. it. This is a Bloomberg Money Minute. Last-minute maneuvering about a vote on that $2 trillion package of aid working its way through the Senate may be what ate away at a lot of Wall Street's enthusiasm. The Dow and S&P finished the day with gains of 1 to 2 and a third percent. The Dow up 496, the S&P 28. But the Nasdaq edged lower, down almost a half percent. 34 points. It isn't just big industrial companies like Ford and 3M working to help increase output of ventilators and medical supplies. Gap and Canada Goose both are working with partners to make scrubs for hospital workers and gowns for patients. Gap by bringing hospital networks in California together with factories. Canada Goose is using its own manufacturing facilities in Canada to produce medical gear. And just as China is showing signs of recovering from the virus and bringing factories back online fully, Retailers are suspending or canceling clothing orders. That's threatening factory jobs in Asia. Joan Doniger, Bloomberg Radio. You're fierce. You take care of business and don't hold back. Taking care of your health shouldn't be any different. You know when something's off. Don't ignore symptoms like fatigue, joint pain, and rashes. Listen to your body. It could be lupus. We're here to help you take control. Learn how at BeFearsTakeControl.org. Brought to you by the Lupus Foundation of America and the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention. In-depth analysis, concise reporting, need-to-know global business news. Around the world and across the markets, Bloomberg connects the dots for decision makers. Stay on top of today's headlines. Follow big breakthroughs in tech. Understand the latest political issues. See how the world's wealthiest are spending their money. Track what's happening in the markets and much more. Subscribe today to Bloomberg, the global standard for business reporting. Get it all at Bloomberg.com slash subscriptions. The mark. Life. It's a funny old game, isn't it? One minute you're on top, the next, you need all the help you can get. <laughs> so make sure you're there for those around you. Don't just be a spectator, be a supporter. Bleed for life. Join us at Blood. .co.uk. On this week's On the Media, for years, U.S. preppers have invested time and money getting ready to tackle imaginary doomsday scenarios. So... You can't make up a story anymore. It doesn't work. We've got coronavirus, and it's not hypothetical. It's actually happening. Don't miss this week's On the Media from WNYC. Listen to the On the Media podcast from WNYC Studios on TuneIn today. You love TuneIn for live-breaking news from CNN, MSNBC, Fox, CNBC, and more. But when you can't catch your favorite show as it airs, it might just be a click away as a podcast. Search your favorite news station to explore all the on-demand news shows on TuneIn. It's TuneIn Sports on this day. March 25th, 1972. UCLA men's basketball wins its sixth consecutive national basketball title. UCLA has won its sixth consecutive NCAA basketball championship and pandemonium reigns as delirious UCLA players are congratulated by their Florida State rivals as well as their fans. To listen to conversations breaking down the moments just like this, click on sports to be part of the discussion on TuneIn. Did you know your favorite radio stations are in your pocket? Yes, the TuneIn app lets you listen to the same radio stations you pick up on your home or car radio anywhere you want. To see all the stations broadcasting in your area, find the local radio section on the home screen. Keep it local with TuneIn. Launch new strategies, add distribution channels, or exploit new technology to re-engineer the investor experience are often rewarded. However, in an industry paralyzed with complexity, few act with agility or decisively. Few run their businesses strategically, yet the most competitive managers in the market know with the right partner and a flexible operating system, you can. Go boldly toward change with SEI Investment Manager Services. I'm Steve Meyer, President of SEI's Investment Manager Services. At SEI, we understand the emerging forces that will define success for asset managers and what firms will need to compete tomorrow. 
That's why we continually optimize SCI's global operating platform. If your business requires greater agility, our advanced technology, integrated best-in-class systems, and multi-asset expertise can be your catalyst for business transformation. With SEI Investment Manager Services, you lead the charge in a competitive marketplace. Learn more at seic.com slash seize change. Hi, I'm your host, Smokey Cole Bear. Filling in for Smokey, because after 75 years of... Only you can prevent wildfires. Turns out there's much more to say. Nearly 90% of wildfires are caused by us humans being careless. Dumping our used barbecue coals willy-nilly. Guess the song was wrong. We did start the fire. That's why I respect Mother Nature and her trees, whether coniferous or new car scented. Brought to you by the U.S. Forest Service, your state forester, and the Ad Council. If morning is not your favorite part of the day, then maybe you're not listening. What would you expect from Bezos next? Bloomberg Surveillance. We finally start to make a move. Weekday mornings at 7 Eastern on Bloomberg Radio. Bloomberg, the world is listening. Broadcasting live to New York, Bloomberg 1130, to Washington, D.C., Bloomberg 991, to Boston, Bloomberg 1061, to San Francisco, Bloomberg 960, to the country, Sirius XM Channel 119, and around the globe, the Bloomberg Business app and BloombergRadio.com. This is Bloomberg Business Week. Well, coming up, Carol, we've got a story of a company doing some good at a time when people really, uh, really need it. Excited to talk to the COO of Bloom Energy out in California. Yep, we'll get to her in just a moment. Uh, let's get back to your top business stories. A lot of news after the closing bell. Here is once again Charlie Pellet. Uh, thank you very much, Carol Master. Absolutely right about that. Apple says it has sourced and procured 10 million masks and will donate them to the medical community in the U.S. This from the CEO, Tim Cook, who who posted a video on Twitter while working from home. Apple, though, weighing a delay on the release of its 5G iPhone as the coronavirus threatens to sap demand and disrupt its product development schedule. This according to Nikkei, citing three unnamed people familiar with the matter. Apple shares did turn lower late in the day, down by six-tenths of one percent. And Amazon has told employees at a warehouse in Shepherdsville, Kentucky, that it will keep their facility shut indefinitely after three employees there tested positive for the disease caused by the coronavirus. Mixed day on Wall Street, but the S&P did post its first back-to-back gains since February 12th as investors awaited unprecedented government spending packages aimed at countering the hit from the coronavirus pandemic. Right now, we've got the S&P down 28 points, a drop today of 1.1%. The Dow advanced up 495 points, up 2.4%. Again, the S&P rose 28 points. NASDAQ, though, had a down day mix session. NASDAQ down 33, a drop there of five tenths of one percent. John Levito is the co-chief investment officer of Global Fixed Income at American Century Investments. And right here on Bloomberg Business Week, he told us you could not ignore the Federal Reserve. You know, obviously, initially, I would say the reaction was a bit muted, but I think between, uh, you know, the, the fiscal action and then the accumulation of action that we've seen from a monetary policy standpoint, it is, it is at least... Um, Stabilizing for the you know for for now over the last couple of days uh, markets a little bit but you know there is it, it, it's very very early. Well, the ten year yield now 086 percent gold down one point three percent sixteen ten the ounce West Texas intermediate crude up nine tenths of one percent twenty four twenty four a barrel. Source tells Bloomberg Netflix is reducing video quality in India Australia and some Latin American countries following conversations with internet service providers and governments. The Netflix shares dropped today by 4.2%. Recapping, stocks mixed, S&P advanced 28 points up by 1.1%. I'm Charlie Pellet. That is a Bloomberg Business Flash. Charlie, thanks a lot. You're listening to Bloomberg Business Week, and we are aiming to bring you some stories amid all of this of companies stepping up, and that's what happened out in California with Bloom Energy. Susan Brennan is the Chief Operating Officer at that green energy company. She joins us on the phone from Sunnyvale. Susan, good to have you with Carol and myself. First of all, you are right there as we are in the thick of this crisis. How are you? I'm doing very well. Thank you. And thank you for taking the time to speak with me. I'm healthy. My family's healthy. And I uh, have an amazing team uh, supporting me in Bloom Energy. Well, and you guys have been... Right, and you guys have been doing some some pretty impressive work, refurbishing, repurposing, I believe, some old ventilators, getting them into the hands of people who need them the most. Tell us how this all came about. 
Yes, um, about, uh, it seems like a long time ago, you know, but uh, last Monday, our CEO, K.R. Sridhar, uh, reached out to Governor Newsom, and when there was a call to action for industry to help address the, the likely shortages and gaps in supply, uh, he offered our services. Uh, Bloom is the only company to have commercialized the fuel cell, and as such, we also have had to build our entire service. So we service our own product, we service in the field. And what we, uh, you know, we're looking to take what the, uh, the DNA of our company, which is mission driven, you know, deep technical knowledge, strong engineering, and apply it to, uh, to the need that, that is, uh, that is clearly, uh, you know, very, uh, very large right now, and we're looking to fill the gap until the uh, OEMs of these ventilators can can reframe their capacity and retool to build more volume. We're here to fill the gap for uh, to refurbish what is existing and right. get it into the hands well, of people who need it as soon as feasible. Well, Susan, and you have guys have I think the ideal environment, right? Because when I, you know, I was thinking about all these places who want to help out in terms of medical equipment. I mean, you have to have a very sterile environment, correct, in order to be working on these types of equipment? Yeah. So we are very, very, uh, we make the fuel cells in a technologically sound environment. What we have found by talking to both the state and the partners that, uh, you know, as we say, Bloom can do this, but we can't do it alone. So we're partnering with the state and with the uh, companies that make these ventilators. We're doing the piece that really um, allows them to focus on building the new ones. So our environment is more uh, around the speed and the deep engineering knowledge we have. Okay. Uh, one of our engineers actually took a service manual uh, last Wednesday night, downloaded it from the Internet, and taught himself how to refurbish ventilators overnight. So, so it's really us plugging that gap. I am curious, too, about some of the stories I'm seeing just come across Twitter about San Francisco in particular and other areas in California. Um, you know, you guys are getting ready for another wave or surge, I should say, when it comes to coronavirus cases. Um, just tell us a little bit about the environment. You're there on the ground, what you're hearing, what you're seeing as you walk about and try to go about your daily business. So I have been in industry for over 30 years, and what I'm seeing is the most cooperative environment that I've ever experienced between uh, states, between the state of California and the state of Delaware with our company directly, uh, with companies that we didn't even know were in existence, you know, a week ago. Uh, ventilator companies, people making, making the ventilators, um, you know, us partnering with them and saying, hey, you know, we can help you fill the gap. We can offload your service requirements so you can focus on what you do well to your earlier point and build more of these, uh, you know, th these absolutely very needed assets. Um, in the same time, we have logistics companies offering to help us uh, either go pick up the ventilators or return them back to the state of California. Our sales team has jumped in and they're reaching out to hospitals. Um, hospitals may have some of these ventilators uh, that, uh, you know, even if they have two or three, we're, we've got uh, we've got logistics companies that willing to partner with us to go pick them up. We've got people bringing us food. Um, the the uh, you know, I live here. I live in San Jose. The environment is extremely. It's calm. It's productive. It's focused and it's efficient. All right. Well, uh, really a, a nice good news story of people uh, stepping up. And we are hearing this pretty consistently, yeah. especially about Silicon Valley. And we're going to have more on that later in the show and throughout the course of the week because, you know, people do tend to rally around a cause. And I really like what Susan said about, you know, sort of a mission-driven company and what that means. All right. Susan Brennan, COO of Bloom Energy, joining us from Silicon Valley. Let's stay out uh, on the West Coast. Ed Baxter is there. He's got your world of national headlines. Hey, yeah, he, she's just down the road from me, uh, Jason, absolutely. And uh, speaking of California here, uh, Governor Gavin Newsom has been holding a news conference. Uh, and uh, one of the key things that he talked about just a few minutes ago was helping mortgage payers. He calls the state unique. When I have clarity on those legal parameters, other states I know 
have done versions of this, but the state of California has its unique set of circumstances. Uh, we will provide clarity, uh, and I will be very direct with you on the answer. Yeah, he also says that he feels more confident today that at any time during the crisis that hospitals are starting to catch up with the projected curve of increased cases, but he says that has been done through social distancing. Senate leadership, U.S., reaching agreement on $2 trillion stimulus, but a group of conservative senators, including Lindsey Graham says they need to adjust unemployment benefits. This pandemic is coming back in the fall. We need to create pandemic systems on unemployment that are sustainable. He says this plan pays people more in benefits than they make in pay on the job, encouraging people to quit to get the bennies. So Bloomberg's Kevin Cirilli says it does slow things down. Every source that I've spoken with today has said that this will likely be passed by at the absolute latest, the end of the week. However, it could come a day or two earlier. Now, just a couple of global notes. Tokyo now asking people to stay home. Spain had its deadliest day yet. In Britain, the government moved to shut down parliament. Prince Charles has tested positive. India efforting to enforce its lockdown of about 1.3 billion people. New cases in Italy have slowed down day to day in san francisco i'm ed baxter this is bloomberg radio guys Our- business is constantly evolving is your financial printer evolving to keep ahead of the curve at command financial we are redefining financial printing by providing industry-leading expertise leveraging technology and honing processes and best practices Every day, Command helps SEC registrants, as well as members of their working groups, including securities attorneys and investment bankers, prepare, file, and disseminate regulatory and disclosure documents, such as registration statements, M&A documents, and mutual fund prospectuses and reports. Command provides a full range of services to help you effectively complete your deal, meet your disclosure requirements, and achieve your shareholder communications objectives. Visit our website at commandfinancial.com and learn how we're evolving, not only with the times, but also with your business requirements. Command Financial, redefining financial printing. Imagine. Imagine being denied an apartment because of your religion or your race or because you have children or a disability. It's so wrong. Yes, but who has the power to stop this? You do. Each of us has the power. The law is on your side. It's illegal for landlords to discriminate because of race, color, religion, sex, national origin, disability, or familial status. If you suspect that you have experienced housing discrimination, file a complaint with HUD immediately so we can investigate it. Fair housing is your right. Use it. To learn more, visit HUD.gov slash fair housing. That's HUD.gov slash fair housing. Or call 1-800-669-9777. 1-800-669-9777. A public service message from HUD in partnership with the National Fair Housing Alliance. Life. It's a funny old game, isn't it? One minute you're on top, the next, you need all the help you can get. So make sure you're there for those around you. Don't just be a spectator. Be a supporter. Bleed for life. Join us at blood.co.uk. I love dogs and cats. Short-haired, long-haired. I love you all, don't I, Bianca? But I don't love cat hair all over my carpet, which is why I got a job testing vacuum cleaners in the witch test lab. We rub an exact amount of real pet hair into an exact area of real carpet to see which vacuum cleaners really suck it up. And the vacuums that perform best are the only ones we recommend for your home. Witch.co.uk. Our tests find you the best. Let's tune in sports on this day. March 25th, 1972. UCLA men's basketball wins its sixth consecutive national basketball title. UCLA has won its sixth consecutive NCAA basketball championship and pandemonium reigns as delirious UCLA players are congratulated by their Florida State rivals as well as their fans. To listen to conversations breaking down the moments just like this, click on sports to be part of the discussion on TuneIn. 
Want to know a quick, easy way to see if your favorite podcasts have a new episode available? Just go to the home screen on your TuneIn app and see the latest editions under the Your New Episode section. Happy listening. This week on the New Yorker Radio Hour, we're taking a deep look at the way the coronavirus pandemic has rippled through every aspect of our lives, seemingly in a matter of days and weeks. Whether you're working from home, not working, or have to go to work, COVID-19 has changed everything. Listen to this episode of the New Yorker Radio Hour on TuneIn today. Leave it to the New York Times to make the most intelligent pop music podcast out there. Welcome to the New York Times Popcast. On the Popcast, the Times music staff gets together for a weekly roundtable on the hottest topics in popular music. From award show autopsies and reactions to new releases to difficult to process scandals and emerging themes in the music landscape, hear distinguished music critics share their perspectives on the latest music news, songs, albums, and artists of note on the New York Times Popcast. Search and favorite Popcast to join the conversation. Just text EXPLORE to 64000 and start your first lesson in the language of your choice for free. Download the Babbel app or text EXPLORE to 64000 and try it for free. Text E-X-P-L-O-R-E to 64000. Vatsal Shah is Senior Project Engineer at Mott McDonald, a global engineering consultancy with more than 16,000 employees. He earned his Ph.D. at New Jersey Institute of Technology and as an adjunct professor is helping NJIT students explore emerging technologies. My focus is renewable markets, emerging technologies, the idea of floating cities. What are we doing to develop that? What will happen to the city in the water? Well, you're going to have waves hitting it. You're going to have solar. How are you going to you know, develop plants? How are you going to develop vegetation and farming? That sort of thought process happens at NGIT. We actually plan out what will the city look like? How do we develop that? So in 10 years, we're actually ready to take on those challenges when we have our first development in the water. NGIT also has been doing a lot of work in self-healing materials. So taking the polymers and the, the new material that we have in our material sciences departments and putting them into things like concrete, things like steel, reinforcing our soil. NJIT, New Jersey Institute of Technology. Learn more at njit.edu. Markets, headlines, and breaking news 24 hours a day at Bloomberg.com, the Bloomberg Business app, and on Quick Take by Bloomberg. This is a Bloomberg Business Flash. From Bloomberg World Headquarters, I'm Charlie Pellet. Turned out to be a mixed day on Wall Street. The Dow, the S&P both higher. NASDAQ declined. Final details holding up a, vir- a virus bill vote. That helped send the Dow, uh, has helped uh, pair gains for stocks, and in fact sent NASDAQ lower in the final hour of trading. So here's how it ends. S&P up 28 points, a gain of 1.1%. S&P ending the Wednesday session at 24.75. The Dow up 495 points. It was up uh, up by 2.4%, ending the day at 21,200. NASDAQ declined 33 points, down by 5 tenths of 1%. Tenure down 3.30 seconds with a yield of 0.85%. Right now, gold down 1% today, 16.16 the ounce. West Texas intermediate crude up 1.6%, 2441 a barrel. Brent up one and a half percent, twenty seven fifty six. Recapping mixed Wednesday. Nasdaq lower. The Dow, the S and P both higher. S and P up twenty eight, a gain of one point one percent. Back to back gains. I'm Charlie Pellet. That is a Bloomberg Business Flash. All right, Charlie Pellet. Thank you so much. This is Bloomberg Business Week on this Wednesday. Carol Masser and Jason Kelly both working from our homes. This is the new world order right now. And the statistics. I remember we were talking about this a lot, Jason. About twenty five percent of I think. Workers can work from home. So this is this environment that we're all talking about. And someone who knows a lot about it is Vlad Shmonis. He's CEO of Ring Central. He joins us on the phone from Belmont, California. Vlad, nice to have you here on Bloomberg Radio. First of all, your world, your family. I hope everyone's safe. Yes, uh, Carol. Uh, hi. Thank you for having me. Uh, yeah, thank you for asking. Uh, we're all good. Uh, also working from home. Uh, lots of family bonding time as well. So trying to make the best of it. Also try to stay productive, keep our customers productive as well on our platform. 
And so what are you seeing? Like, take us inside, because I think we all have sort of anecdotal evidence of this. You know, we're all dealing uh, with our beleaguered uh, IT teams. We have an incredible engineer on our team, Charlie Vollmer, who got us all set up. We obviously have a little different setup when we're trying to broadcast. But, you know, everyday folks are trying to sort of juggle everything. What have you learned with what seems to be the most massive test of remote working we could imagine? Well, uh, will to persevere comes to mind. Uh, look, uh, we have uh, many hundreds of thousands of businesses on our platform, uh, millions uh, of uh, users, of end users. And, uh, look, people are trying to uh, continue with their lives uh, best they can. And um, what we're seeing uh, from our perspective as a service provider is a tremendous spike uh, in usage. Uh, we see uh, uh, high double digits, uh, 60% plus uh, in uh, week over week. That's week over week growth. That's unprecedented. And uh, we see uh, usage across um, all modes, um, uh, messaging, uh, video meetings, and, uh, you know, traditional uh, phone traffic, uh, you know, remaining stable, but uh, messaging and uh, video uh, really climbing up high. And um, there doesn't seem to be any end in sight to that, as uh, work from anywhere is, uh, continues to be a reality, or work from home in particular continues to be a reality for ourselves, our company, as well as for majority of our customers. Talk to us, too, about running a business in this environment. Uh, this is what we call one of those black swans. Who could have thought, who could have predicted uh, that this was going to be the situation that we'd be in? You know, even a month ago, nobody would have predicted this. Um, you're a publicly held company. Um, you know, you trade on the exchanges. Uh, you're seeing bailout programs being considered. Um, you know, how do you see this? How do you make projections for your world at this point? How do you take care of your employees? There's a lot of concerns about... You know, for workers that stay home, are they going to re be receiving paychecks? Um, how do you do it? Correct. Yes, uh, look, um, we are uh, very fortunate uh, to firstly uh, all be, uh, uh, you know, uh, healthy and uh, with our families and uh, still being able to be productive as a company. Uh, to your uh, question, uh, look, we have... Um, over uh, 5,000 uh, folks involved with the company. Um, uh, we are uh, not projecting uh, any reduction in uh, workforce uh, ourselves. Uh, as a matter of fact, we uh, continue with our uh, hiring uh, and expanding our team to the best we can, uh, you know, given the situation. Um, now, it's also the case that um, uh, we happen to be uh, one of a small handful of companies that offer solutions uh, to this new uh, world we're all living in. Ring Central enables uh, businesses of all sizes, uh, from very small to very, very large, um, to be uh, productive uh, from anywhere, which now means from home. And uh, our solutions um, uh, enable people to uh, message, uh, you know, do business messaging, video meetings, uh, as well as, uh, you know, traditional phone conversations. Um, so, again, uh, in a way, for Ring Central, this uh, um, is turning into a bit of a tailwind, probably going to be here to stay with us, uh, you know, since um, uh, this uh, work from home um, culture, uh, we think is likely going to persist even uh, past the crisis itself. Many people are finding themselves uh, quite productive, uh, working not from office environments. But not to mention the fact, of course, uh, you know, there is no end in sight to the, right. uh, you know, what we in California call shelter at home, what have you. And so, Vlad, are you seeing any uh, any serious infrastructure gaps uh, as you talk to customers, and where are they, either geographically or sort of along the uh, along the chain here? Uh, we're seeing uh, lots of customers uh, in a similar situation that we find ourselves in, uh, which is uh, they're locked out from their offices. Mm -hmm. So work from home is a reality. Uh, we are an uh, international company. We have um, 
customers uh, pretty much all over the globe uh, with service directly available in over uh, 40 countries uh, at this point. Uh, so, so Fla- uh, hey, Vlad, if I may, since you're internet, I forgot that you guys, yeah, you're all over the world. From just quickly in about 30 seconds, you know, in terms of the virus spread, what are you seeing? What are you hearing from your customers? Look, uh, it's, 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 it's across the board. And, um, uh, what we're hearing is that they need uh, solutions to stay productive as they are uh, working from home. Uh, many of our customers continue to be in business. They, uh, you know, continue to do business. And it's not just our customers. It's our partners, uh, right. our resellers. Right. People are trying to stay productive. We're there to support them. All right. Going to leave it on that note. Vlad, thank you so much for your time. Vlad um, Shmonis, he is CEO of Ring Central, joining us uh, on the phone on this Wednesday. And, yeah, I mean, Jason, I do think about uh, all of these ways that we're working remotely, how much of it will end up sticking. I do think about the conversation we had with uh, Dr. Ian Lusbader earlier about telemedicine. I mean, totally. I've, I've often gotten things from our healthcare programs and suppliers like, oh, you know, try this telemedicine. And I'm like, yeah, I'm not yeah, that interested. Whatever. I'm just going to go see my doctor. Yeah, <laughs> totally. 100%. Right? But, but you're rethinking it and saying, you know what? I had a conversation with a doctor about something and you know what? I got what I needed, you know, right. so it's interesting how we start to think about it. All right, you do want to mention we do have a headline on Ford, Jason. We do. Ford uh, cut to junk by S&P. And, of course, this is following a headline we had earlier that GM's ratings may be cut to junk by Moody. So you are seeing uh, the ratings agencies come in and really rethink uh, what's going on in the automotive industry uh, specifically. The one thing I did want to add to what you were saying, because I think it's so true, is we haven't seen the full effect of 5G yet. And no. once that happens, you do wonder right. whether some of these glitches that we're seeing from an infrastructure perspective, whether they don't... I'll stream a yoga class yeah. to my home on yeah. a weekend. Totes. I'm, I'm kind of into it. Totes All right. goats. All for, right. those- for those of you listening in New York, San Francisco, and watching on YouTube, Bloomberg Business Week is going to continue. It's going to be great. If you're listening on Bloomberg 99.1 in D.C., sound on with Kevin Strilly. That's up next. This is Bloomberg Business Life. It's a funny old game, isn't it? One minute you're on top, the next, you need all the help you can get. (laughs) So make sure you're there for those around you. Don't just be a spectator, be a supporter. Bleed for life. Join us at Blood. .co.uk. Like what you're listening to? Want to make getting back to it easier? Use the favorite button to keep track of the stations and podcasts you love on TuneIn. Just tap or click the heart icon to add it to your favorites. Then find all your go-to audio under the favorites tab. Pretty easy, right? It's TuneIn Sports on this day. March 25th, 1972. UCLA men's basketball wins its sixth consecutive national basketball title. UCLA has won its sixth consecutive NCAA basketball championship and pandemonium reigns as delirious UCLA players are congratulated by their Florida State rivals as well as their fans. To listen to conversations breaking down the moments just like this, click on sports to be part of the discussion on TuneIn. This week on the New Yorker Radio Hour, we're taking a deep look at the way the coronavirus pandemic has rippled through every aspect of our lives, seemingly in a matter of days and weeks. Whether you're working from home, not working, or have to go to work, COVID-19 has changed everything. Listen to this episode of the New Yorker Radio Hour on TuneIn today. a day at Bloomberg.com, on the Bloomberg Business app, and on Quick Take by Bloomberg. This is Bloomberg Radio. From Bloomberg World Headquarters, I'm Charlie Pellet. Number of After the Bell stories, Micron Technology, the biggest U.S. maker of computer chips, memory, uh, computer memory chips, predicted stronger than expected revenue in the current quarter, indicating orders from data center operators are helping make up for a demand shortfall from smartphone makers, crushed by the effects of the coronavirus pandemic. Repeating an earlier headline, Ford cut to junk by S&P, GM placed on watch negative by S&P. That was 
mid-afternoon, BMW and Ford also downgraded by Moody's Investor Service. Apple says it has sourced and procured 10 million masks and will donate them to the medical community in the U.S. This according to CEO Tim Cook in a video he posted on Twitter. And Apple is said to be weighing a delay on the release of its 5G iPhones as the coronavirus threatens to sap demand and disrupt its product development schedule. This according to Nikkei, citing three unnamed people familiar with the matter. It was an update for the S&P 500 index. U.S. stocks posted their first back-to-back gains since February 12th as investors awaited unprecedented government spending packages aimed at countering the hit from the coronavirus pandemic. S&P up 28, up by 1.1%. The Dow up 495, up 2.4%. NASDAQ fell 33, down by 5 tenths of 1%. The 10-year down 6.30 seconds with a yield of 0.86%. Well, as for the market backdrop, Tony Dwyer is equity strategist at Canaccord Genuity. Last Thursday, Friday was like, oh my God, we're never going to come out of this. The market crashed. It was a 15% down week. Now we go into what we call the rally phase. So you had the panic phase. Now you go into the relief rally phase where all you, you know, the government comes into the assistant and you feel better and you're like, oh my God, that's over. Unfortunately, and fortunately, that typically recoups about 30 to 40% of the losses you have. So that would bring us up on the S&P 500 somewhere around 2550 to 2600. And today, the S&P 500 index ended the day at 2475. Banks among today's gaining stocks, J.P. Morgan Chase, for example, up 3.7%. Citigroup up by 3%. Bank America up by 0.3%. Wells Fargo up by two-tenths of 1%. Again, recapping, the Dow, the S&P both higher, NASDAQ lower, S&P up 28, up by 1.1%. Gold down today, little change, falling by 50 cents. I'm Charlie Pellet. That is a Bloomberg. Business Flash. This is Bloomberg Business Week with Carol Mazur and Jason Kelly on Bloomberg Radio. All right, you are listening to Bloomberg Business Week. Jason Kelly, Carol Masser here with you. Really, really excited about our next guest, Michael Moe, co-founder of GSV Asset Management, longtime thinker, investor, just all-around good guy, and full confession, full disclosure, a friend of mine joining us on the phone from Woodside, California. Michael, uh, it's just great to hear your voice. How are you? I'm doing well, Jason. Great to hear your voice as well. All right. Well, I wish we were having this conversation uh, at the Village Pub uh, right next door to where you are. But uh, here we are. First of all, uh, you know, what's it like uh, out there? You're in California, obviously, you know, before New York became the epicenter, you know, Northern California really was where people's uh, attention was focused. Uh, What do you make of it? What's going on around there? Well, I mean, I think, you know, I mean, clearly everywhere uh, people are... are, um, you know, or, or, you know, a little bit of a shock. You know, I think the, you know, the the uh, fear of the, the virus, you know, has um, really kind of consumed many people's thinking and behavior. And, and when people get scared, and I think many a lot of people are scared, you know, it's hard to focus on uh, much else. And so I think, generally speaking, that's kind of it. It's a little bit eerie. It's you know, I live in a place where there's typically a lot going on, a lot of energy, and it's very very quiet. Yeah, and I think we do wonder, Michael, you know, how much of kind of how we're adjusting our lives at this point, how much of it once we get through this, I'm assuming we of course will, you know, that how much of it stays with us in terms of, you know, concerns about viruses, because there will be more viruses to come, but also how we're kind of adapting our work lives. A lot of us working from home and the ability to do that. I just wonder, you know, we had a conversation with someone who talked, a well-known uh, investor, Kathy Wood, who invests in disruption. And she says, you know, when you see market disruption, that's where you kind of get innovation uh, and opportunity. So I wonder, you know, if you're looking at it in a similar way. That's clearly where the half is glass, you know, the half, the mm. glass is half full. I mean, you've seen this over and over again, where you've had dislocation and disruption. You've also had huge opportunities. And so I think what's exciting, and, and, and then again, this is a very serious situation, and, and obviously the most important thing is you know, health and safety. But you are seeing people in their creativity and their innovation thinking about what, you know, what does this mean and where does this go? So I like to say, as we were, it was it was BC before that's before Corona, and now we've got AD, which is going to be you know after the disease. 
and these opportunities that emerge AD, um, I think are going to be uh, very exciting. And, and so that's part of what we're doing is focus on what, what those opportunities might be and also understand what it means for kind of the companies that um, grew up in the old world. Right. Well, one of the things we, I wanted to make sure we talked about, Michael, was, you know, normally this time of year, you are like in the thick of planning this massive conference that you do in, in San Diego in partnership with Arizona State. Uh, I believe you, know, you bring together some huge speakers to talk about the future of education, education technology, ed tech specifically. Uh, I guess two things. It seems like you've made a big decision to do a lot of that virtually this year. Tell us about that first. Well, we're shifting the physical conference to the fall um, with the hopes that things will be um, more or less back to normal by then. Mm -hmm. But we didn't want to lose the um, opportunity to convene people that we're going to do it virtually. So we're going to have a one-day virtual uh, event um, on next Wednesday, April 1st. And we call this you know, the dawn of the age of digital learning because while digital learning has been you know, growing at a very healthy clip up until now, um, you know, this, the coronavirus has really been uh, a major catalyst to accelerate this. And with, whether you're a parent, whether you're a K-12 school, you know, there's 1.4 billion kids around the world right now that, that we're going to school and now are home. Um, you know, universities are scrambling to figure out what they do to, um, you know, to provide uh, courses for, for their, for their you know, college students. And corporations are, are, are reimagining what they need to do to upskill, reschool their, their workforce. So it, it is, is, as much as this is a, a very difficult situation for society and for the economy, for online learning, um, it's, it's, I think, a, you know, it, it's based on accelerant to the future. Well, and the same thing with, like, I think, um, you know, using the virtual world in terms of distance and reaching out to our medical community, right, in terms of uh, telehealth. Um, I mean, I wonder if that is something that we look at very differently coming out on the other side. For sure. I mean, again, I think this has been, is, is, this has been a, a total shift in terms of how people, you know, think about, you know, what, you know, sort of the realities of, of a interconnected world, urbanization, and, uh, and and globalization that that uh, you know the pandemics you know people that are you know worry about you know things that could happen in the future have been worried about pandemics for some time, but really this is the first time where it's been you know basically you know relevant to everybody, yeah. and I think that kind of you know mind shift is going to affect you know this isn't going to, the genie's not going back in the bottle, I think it's a permanent shift about how people think about. Um, activity and how they've done you know, how they do things in the future differently than maybe they did in the past. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it is one of these moments where I think it's fair to say we are thinking, rethinking every aspect of our lives in terms of how we work, how we live, <laughs> where we live, yeah. um, who we interact with, how much we travel, how we educate uh, our kids, and, and so much more. Uh, Michael, all right, Michael Mo is going to stick with us. I uh, promise you we're going to get into uh, some more uh, and more interesting stuff. Uh, Michael wrote a book a few years ago called Global Silicon Valley. He also wrote a book about uh, becoming the next star, or finding the next Starbucks, I should say, and really has done a lot of thinking about megatrends, Carol, and uh, I want to get into them with that because I've seen some presentations that he makes yeah. uh, about sort of this both global perspective, but also uh, his and historical perspective as well. Well, and I do think, as we've been hearing, that it's at times like this, people do have some time to kind of take a step back and figure out, okay, how can we do some of these things better and plan for the future? All right, so we're going to get on into that in just a moment. Uh, first up, though, let's get back to World of National News headlines. For that, we head back to uh, Ed Baxter. He is in San Francisco. All right, Carol, thank you. Yeah, um, after Senate leadership reached agreement on the stimulus, $2 trillion, and promised swift action, three conservative Republicans, including Lindsey Graham, have stepped up to say unemployment benefits should not exceed what a person is making on the job. You're literally incentivizing taking people out of the workforce at a time when we need critical infrastructure supplied with workers. And as I say, it stands now, if it stands, $2 trillion package. New York City is closing down some streets to vehicle traffic. Governor Andrew Cuomo says it could be some time. He says separation works. They are effective and they're necessary. And the evidence suggests at this point that they have slowed the hospitalizations. 
And this is everything. Yeah, he also says Easter is far too soon to open things up. And kind of a ditto from California Governor Gavin Newsom. He says California hospitals are starting to catch up. Our hospitals right now are, are in better position to meet a week or two of a worst case scenario than they have been. Uh, our ICUs as well, the new ventilators that we've been able to procure. And he credits social distancing. He also says that he is working on getting relief for people who can get into trouble with mortgages. Meanwhile, a group of seven met today. Secretary of State Mike Pompeo says the main topic was China disinformation. Every one of the nations that was at that meeting this morning was deeply aware of the disinformation campaign that the Chinese Communist Party is engaged in to try and deflect from what has really taken place here. And he says he wants to underline the pandemic began in China. The president now saying he will no longer call it the Chinese virus, though. He says China has suffered through this as well. Global News, 24 hours a day in San Francisco. I'm Ed Baxter. This is Bloomberg Radio. All right. Thank you very much, Ed. You are listening to Bloomberg Business Week. And before we go back to the West Coast and Michael Moe, let's talk about the East Coast and Wall Street. And this story, not surprisingly, Carol, one of the most read on the Bloomberg. We talked a little bit yesterday about what Thomas DiNapoli, the New York State Comptroller, was saying about bonuses following and now more reporting, a perfect storm, as it were. Bonuses could be down 40 percent in 2020. Right. Before 2020. Exactly. And and what is the perfect storm? So you're talking about a global recession that we could see happen. Broader industry shakeups coming out as well. Um, Johnson Associates put this out um, saying it looks like it's going to be a very, very tough compensation year. And this is a shock to the system that you see about every 10 years, which 10 years ago we saw the shock because of the financial crisis. What's important about all of this, Jason, and this is you know, harkens back to um, the bailout programs or the stimulus programs that are going to hopefully come out of Washington that already have and that we're waiting for this next big one. But, you know, the less money people have to ultimately spend in the economy is going to impact our ability to come back or the strength of any recovery. And I'm not saying, well, that means we should give everybody their bonus (laughs) on Wall Street, but I'm just saying that we have to be very smart in trying to evaluate what the future is and what the economic rebound will be off of this. Yeah, and you think about the tri-state area, this is an ecosystem, an economic ecosystem that really does depend largely, or not largely, but it does depend to some extent on the financial services industry, especially if you go to different uh, pockets of it. I just want to read a couple quotes here. Banks are, quote, squarely in the crosshairs. Private equity is, quote, going to take a huge hit. And (laughs) this is my favorite. Investors are getting tired of hedge funds. (laughs) So um, it is interesting to sort of see uh, the contours of this. Uh, When you think about the rich, rich pay packages that we've gotten used to seeing on Wall Street, and maybe next year it could be one of those once a decade type cuts. This is Bloomberg. And Bloomberg Business Week is brought to you by Witham. For 45 years, Witham has been committed to helping businesses be in a position of strength. For guidance on business interruption, continuity issues, and remote workplace solutions, visit Witham.com. The happy family of three were about to welcome a new member. That's right, they were finally getting a dog. Buy on eBay. Dog bed from £12. First, they had to make a few adjustments. Sell white rug. And prepare the kids for the reality of owning a pet. Buy biodegradable poop bags from under £6. Everyone instantly fell in love with little Rocky. Unfortunately, little Rocky fell in love with a cushion. Buy, sell, eBay. Delivery costs may apply. Coronavirus is affecting us all. During this difficult time, we're helping critical workers to make essential journeys by public transport. So, from Monday the 23rd of March, TfL will be operating a gradually reduced service on our network. Some stations will be closed so that we can keep key stations open. Night tube and night overground services have already stopped running, but our extensive night bus service will continue. The Waterloo and City Line is now closed. We will keep you updated as our services change. Search TfL. I love dogs and cats. Short-haired, long-haired. I love you all, don't I, Bianca? But I don't love cat hair all over my carpet, which is why I got a job testing vacuum cleaners in the witch test lab. 
We rub an exact amount of real pet hair into an exact area of real carpet to see which vacuum cleaners really suck it up. And the vacuums that perform best are the only ones we recommend for your home. Which.co.uk. Our tests find you the best. Mayday, Mayday, this is Red Dwarf. Our engines are dead and we're being sucked into a black hole. Can anyone hear me? Over? The only thing that's over is us, Crichton. We're finished! Guys, relax. I've got smart breakdown with the AA. It sends them your vehicle's fault data, so they should know what's wrong before they even get here. Mm, I don't believe it. What, that they'll already know what's wrong? No, that you're actually capable of something useful. The future of breakdown today. The AA. Drive smart. See the AA.com for details. Imagine winning 10 grand. Yes! With Set for Life, you could win 10 grand every month for 30 years. Get in! Amazing! Woo! Yes! Sweet! Unbelievable! Play Thursday and you can make every month amazing with Set for Life and the National Lottery. Your numbers make amazing happen. Prize may be capped, rules, procedures, and game specific rules apply. Players must be 16 or over. At Asda, you can put all your eggs in one basket. Get three Easter eggs for just eight pounds. Like a Cadbury Twirl, Caramel Freddo, or our Asda Free From White Chocolate Egg. Easter egg faves without shelling out. Asda. Selected stores and lines subject to availability. X three pounds each, 115 to 262 grams. It's tune in sports on this day. March 25th, 1972. UCLA men's basketball wins its sixth consecutive national basketball title. UCLA has won its sixth consecutive NCAA basketball championship and pandemonium reigns as delirious UCLA players are congratulated by their Florida State rivals as well as their fans. To listen to conversations breaking down the moments just like this, click on sports to be part of the discussion on TuneIn. Leave it to the New York Times to make the most intelligent pop music podcast out there. Welcome to the New York Times Popcast. On the Popcast, the Times music staff gets together for a weekly roundtable on the hottest topics in popular music. From award show autopsies and reactions to new releases to difficult to process scandals and emerging themes in the music landscape, hear distinguished music critics share their perspectives on the latest music news, songs, albums, and artists of note on the New York Times Popcast. Search and favorite Popcast to join the conversation. Headlines and breaking news 24 hours a day at Bloomberg.com, the Bloomberg Business app, and on Quick Take by Bloomberg. This is a Bloomberg Business Flash. From Bloomberg World Headquarters, I'm Charlie Pellet. Stimulus Insights, stocks advance for a second day. The Dow, the S&P both higher, NASDAQ lower. Stocks posting their first back-to-back gains since February 12th as investors await unprecedented government spending packages aimed at countering the hit from the coronavirus pandemic. Stocks did fade in the final hour of trading with the S&P gaining 28 points, up by 1.1%. The Dow advanced 495 points, up 2.4%. NASDAQ down 33, a drop there of 5 tenths of 1%. Tenure down 6.30 seconds with a yield of 0.86%. Gold up $1.10 now, higher by 1 tenth of 1%, 16.18 the ounce. And West Texas Intermediate Crude up 1.3%, 24.31 a barrel. I'm Charlie Pellet. That is is a Bloomberg Business Flash. All right, Charlie, thanks so much. Let's get back to our conversation with Michael Moe. He is out in California and is co-founder of GSV Asset Management. Michael, uh, great to have you still with us. And, you know, you wrote a book a couple years ago uh, that I read. It's fantastic, and it's about Global Silicon Valley. This whole notion of the Global Silicon Valley is the Global Silicon Valley Handbook is the technical title. Um, but you have really explored this notion of this interconnected world and this notion that the ideas, the ethos of Silicon Valley is much wider spread than just the place where you uh, happen to be sitting right now. Does this dent that ambition at all or does it strengthen it? Yeah, I think it actually is going to strengthen it. And I think that's you know, partially you've had this trend that's been going on for you know a dozen years Oh, you know the you know, GSV stands for Global Silicon Valley, and so to your point, you know the mindset of innovation and entrepreneurship that's made Silicon Valley such an amazing place, and I've been fortunate to live in for 25 years, is going, you know, spreading throughout the world. And you're looking at the ambition that uh, exists with you know, young people that want to not work for the large company but want to start their own business. And you know, in today's world, where you know you're going to have more difficult hiring is going to not be as robust as what we've seen 
the last five years, you're going to see that likely accelerate because your opportunity cost to start a business is lower. Mm. And so what we're seeing is from you know from Austin to Boston, from Chicago to Sao Paulo, from Mumbai to Shanghai, Dubai, this emergence of this global Silicon Valley. And just to put some meat on the bones in terms of data, 10 years ago, 92% of all venture capital was the United States, and much of that was Silicon Valley. Last year, 55% of all venture capital was outside of the United States. Wow. So you, the shift has been dramatic, and it's exciting. It's great. I mean, you know, the U.S. is 94%, or, or excuse me, U.S. is 4% of the world population. So spreading, uh, democratizing uh, entrepreneurship, you know, creating uh, opportunities wherever you might be. You don't have to move to Silicon Valley to start uh, an idea that uh, could be transformative. I think that's a very, very positive both for entrepreneurs, but also for society overall. Right, creates a competitive environment, and as Jason knows, I'm a pretty competitive kind of person. But I think, it, no. but I think, but I think it makes all of us, and he is too, and it makes the world or it makes us all better. But I do wonder. You've heard some of the conversations, Michael, about um, a, you know, kind of a, a tech, you know, war between uh, China and the United States. How do you see it as you look around the globe? Are we are we going to be entering that kind of phase, and is that a good kind of war to be having? If so. Well, I think the war of creating better product and better technology is going to ultimately benefit um, society and, and everybody. I mean, when you go to China, I've been to China 20 times in the last three years. And the thing I know about China is the more I go, the less I know. But I also know the ambition of the people in China is remarkable. So it used to be the place that you know was, was a copier. You know, they were, they were the imitator. Now they're the innovator. And so there is like artificial intelligence. It's going to push... You know other geographies, including the United States, to compete. And I think the you know the kind of the noise with the with the China, U.S. Uh, trade war. You know while that's created a lot of, um, uh, you know some a lot, lot of noise. I think ultimately it should have a benefit to to, to level a playing field that ultimately you know benefits everybody that wants to compete on a more fair basis. So anyway, I think. And there's no absolute, um, you know, answer. But the but the but the overall gravity of this is, I think it's it's going to accelerate innovation and technology. It's going to benefit society. It's going to benefit business. And so, you know, Michael, one of the reasons I, I love talking to you, and especially like having dinner with you, is you just you can be so expansive uh, in a lot of ways. And I've seen some very provocative presentations that you've given, as I was alluding to earlier. You have a great historical perspective about the markets, about economies uh, globally and, and domestically. Put this in perspective for us. We keep throwing around words like unprecedented, which it is in, in a lot of ways. But help us, uh, give us some context here. Maybe that'll make us feel a little bit better about this disruptive time we seem to be living in. Well, I think what we've seen, I mean, you know, first of all, anytime you've, you've seen a number of times, anytime you have a 20% or greater decline, 80% of the time that is followed by a recession. So I think that's a reality. Do you have a V shape? Do you have a U shape? Do you have an L shape? I'm bullish that you have overall um, platform in, in terms of business opportunity and activity that, that will, uh, when, when we get the, the, the panic behind us, it's not going to be back to normal, but I think you're going to see things that emerge. And, and, and to the earlier part of our conversation, I think you're going to see new areas or areas that existed, but all of a sudden you see this boom and acceleration. Yeah, obviously, you know, I mean, <laughs> Zoom and Slack are, are two places that, um, you know, just it just it's, it's, you know that, that's going to be a, a, a mega wave for a long time. Uh, the area that's personal, uh, that's that's near and dear to your heart, you know, personal fitness. Yeah. You you look at these, you know, the companies, the you know, the Pelotons, the the uh, Tonals, the, the mirrors. I mean, this is you see more and more of innovation, you know, in the, in that in that world. And and, and again, you, you what the great news about entrepreneurs is they solve problems. They run to white space. They write to run to issues. And I think you're going to see. Very exciting companies, like we saw after the financial crisis. You, right. you had, you know, you had Square, you had Stripe, you had Uber. You know, all these these are all in the in the rubble of the of the mess of the financial crisis. And again, I think I'm I'm hopeful. I'm optimistic, like we've seen you know throughout history, basically, that new leaders emerge from uh, disruptive times. 
All right, we're going to leave it there. We could talk to you Wish all you could day. Stay for an uh, hour. <laughs> Michael Mo, you're the best. Uh, come so see us great. in New York. We'll come see you in Silicon Valley uh, once this is all uh, said and done. Always What's that cafe you guys go your, to? Is it the, the Village? Village Pub? It's the Village Pub, and it's uh, one <laughs> of the best restaurants I've ever been to, <laughs> and it's a great place to go and hang out with Michael Mo. Have a nice glass of wine and a nice dinner, and uh, hopefully solve some of the problems of the world. Michael Mo uh, is the co-founder of Global Silicon Valley. GSV Asset Management, his Great books, stuff. really worth reading, Global Silicon Valley Handbook, and Finding the Next Starbucks, a fascinating uh, career that he right. has had. And I should point out, to tease ahead to tomorrow, also a proud graduate of University of Minnesota. We're going to have the president of University of Minnesota, Joan Gable, with us tomorrow. And right now we're awaiting an update from the Coronavirus Task Force, so stick around. Leaders are born. What does it take to get the markets back on the rails? Born leaders are here. The timeline for that can be slow. Bloomberg Daybreak, weekday mornings at 5 Eastern on Bloomberg Radio. Bloomberg, the world is listening. This is a Bloomberg Money Minute. Last-minute maneuvering about a vote on that $2 trillion package of aid working its way through the Senate may be what ate away at a lot of Wall Street's enthusiasm. The Dow and S&P finished the day with gains of 1 to 2 and a third percent. The Dow up 496, the S&P 28. But the Nasdaq edged lower, down almost a half percent. 34 points. It isn't just big industrial companies like Ford and 3M working to help increase output of ventilators and medical supplies. Gap and Canada Goose both are working with partners to make scrubs for hospital workers and gowns for patients. Gap by bringing hospital networks in California together with factories. Canada Goose is using its own manufacturing facilities in Canada to produce medical gear. And just as China is showing signs of recovering from the virus and bringing factories back online fully, Retailers are suspending or canceling clothing orders. That's threatening factory jobs in Asia. Joan Doniger, Bloomberg Radio. Life. It's a funny old game, isn't it? One minute you're on top, the next, you need all the help you can get. <laughs> so make sure you're there for those around you. Don't just be a spectator. Be a supporter. Bleed for life. Join us at Blood. .co.uk. Did you know your favorite radio stations are in your pocket? Yes, the TuneIn app lets you listen to the same radio stations you pick up on your home or car radio anywhere you want. To see all the stations broadcasting in your area, find the local radio section on the home screen. Keep it local with TuneIn. This week on the New Yorker Radio Hour, we're taking a deep look at the way the coronavirus pandemic has rippled through every aspect of our lives, seemingly in a matter of days and weeks. Whether you're working from home, not working, or have to go to work, COVID-19 has changed everything. Listen to this episode of the New Yorker Radio Hour on TuneIn today. You love TuneIn for live breaking news from CNN, MSNBC, Fox, CNBC, and more. But when you can't catch your favorite show as it airs, it might just be a click away as a podcast. Search your favorite news station to explore all the on demand news shows on TuneIn. It's TuneIn Sports on this day, March 25th, 1972. UCLA men's basketball wins its sixth consecutive national basketball title. UCLA has won its sixth consecutive NCAA basketball championship and pandemonium reigns as delirious UCLA players are congratulated by their Florida State rivals as well as their fans. To listen to conversations breaking down the moments just like this, click on sports to be part of the discussion on TuneIn. Years of strength and stability. At Pershing, we're personally invested in your success. Visit Pershing.com to learn more about Pershing's integrated wealth experience. Pershing LLC and Pershing Advisor Solutions LLC are both members of FINRA and SIPC. What if you could keep the top economic experts in a conference room next to your office without having to feed them? Do we need better optics? Do we need some substance? Do CEOs care about ESG? We have seen quite a lot of stimulus pumped into the system already. It's the biggest warning yet about the financial risks of climate change. Now, there are more ways to hear us. Bloomberg Radio, the Bloomberg Business, Radio.com and iHeartRadio apps, and at BloombergRadio.com. Bloomberg, the world is listening. 
Message and data rates may apply. TNC and privacy terms can be found at babbel.com slash terms. Please don't text and drive. Have you wanted to speak a new language, but you thought it'd be too hard or take too much time? Then try Babbel for free by texting EXPLORE to 64000. In just 15 minutes a day, you'll be on your way to speaking a new language in just a few weeks. And right now, you can try Babbel for free. Babbel starts out teaching you words and phrases by matching them with pictures. You won't believe how easy the interactive program is. Soon the sentences get a little bigger, and before you know it, you're having simulated conversations voiced by native speakers. And because Babbel is crafted by language experts and uses the spaced repetition method, in just 10 to 15 minutes a day, you'll be speaking the language of your choice with real confidence. With Babbel, you can speak a language. Just text EXPLORE to 64000 and start your first lesson in the language of your choice for free. Download the Babbel app or text EXPLORE to 64000 and try it for free. Text E-X-P-L-O-R-E to 64000. They don't just talk to the most important people. Can you give us your broad sense of the main driver behind the latest weakness? They talk with the most interesting people. When you talk to your clients, are they taking this seriously? Lisa Abramowitz. What's going to be the main driver? of growth. Paul Sweeney. What did you take away from those Amazon numbers last night? Bloomberg Markets. Is it as ominous this time around? Weekday mornings at 10 Eastern on Bloomberg Radio, the Bloomberg Business App, and BloombergRadio.com. Bloomberg, the world is listening. Hey, y'all, Jeff Foxworthy here. Now, if you've ever found yourself repeating the same thing over and over for 75 years, you might be Smokey Bear. Only you can prevent wildfires. That's why I'm filling in for Smokey to switch things up, because there's a lot more to say. And I should know, because my grandfather was a firefighter, and one of the things he taught me is that the people that love the outdoors the most are often the ones accidentally starting wildfires, which means... Always BYOB. <laughs> no, bring your own bucket to the campfire. And be extra careful with things like burning yard trimmings. Don't just walk away, or chances are you might be starting a wildfire. So, for the love of the outdoors, go to smokybear.com to learn more about wildfire prevention. Brought to you by the U.S. Forest Service, your state forester, and the Ad Council. Broadcasting live to New York, Bloomberg 1130, to Washington, D.C., Bloomberg 991, to Boston, Bloomberg 1061, to San Francisco, Bloomberg 960, to the country, Sirius XM Channel 119, and around the globe, the Bloomberg Business App and BloombergRadio.com. This is Bloomberg Business Week. Well, coming up, we are awaiting the daily briefing related to the coronavirus task force, Carol. Mm -hmm. uh, we hear from them usually well so uh we i'm actually watching a live feed so waiting to see uh you know get an update on the situation uh and we'll get to that in just a moment uh, first up though let's get back to some of your big stories in the world of business and the financial markets here is charlie pellet all right thank you very much back-to-back -back gains for the u.s stock market today the dow the s p both higher nasdaq lower after the bell we heard from micron technology it is the biggest american maker of computer memory chips and it predicted stronger than expected revenue in the current quarter, indicating orders from data center operators are helping make up for a demand shortfall from smartphone makers crushed by the effects of the coronavirus pandemic. Shares of Micron are up now by 4.8%. Apple is weighing a delay on the release of its 5G iPhone as the coronavirus threatens to sap demand and disrupt its product development schedule. This according to Nikkei, which cites three unnamed people familiar with the matter. Again, back-to-back gains. First time that has happened since February 12th as investors await unprecedented government spending packages aimed at countering the hit from the coronavirus pandemic. S&P up 28, up 1.1 percent. The Dow up 495, up 2.4 percent. NASDAQ, though, losing day down 33 points, down 5 tenths of 1 percent. Tenure down 6.30 seconds, yield now 0.84 percent. Gold up $1.10 the ounce at 16.18. West Texas Intermediate Crude higher by 1.2 three percent twenty four thirty one a barrel now what about stimulus and markets Seema Shaw is chief strategist at principal global investors and when you do have a recovery you tend to see everything shifting back to cyclic classes and I think there will be an element of that but given that we um, you know we'll still have a lot of almost destruction of productive capacity it means that people still need to think about which companies have got the strongest balance sheet so those the ones that are going to be able to last through the peak and also through that decline 
Boeing shares drove the Dow today. It's said to be a big beneficiary in the stimulus package. Boeing rallying 24.3%. Airlines also flying high today. Uh, Delta, for example, up 15.6%. American Airlines up by 10.5%. Southwest up 4.6%. JetBlue higher by 20.6%. Recapping, mixed day on Wall Street. S&P up 28, a gain of 1.1%. I'm Charlie Pellet. That is a Bloomberg Business Flash. All right, Charlie. Thank you so much. You're listening to Bloomberg Business Week. We are, of course, awaiting an update from the Coronavirus Task Force. And as soon as that begins in Washington, we'll take it. But in the meantime, Jason, let's talk a little bit about the market. Yeah, let's talk if we can. Uh, you know, one thing I wanted to make sure we we got to, and we're going to bring in Vince Signorella in just a minute. But, you know, one of the things that is interesting to me is watching that market in the last 20 to 30 minutes. You saw some headlines come out that basically are putting at least the timing of this vote in jeopardy and maybe, you know, giving you a sense of where there are some disagreements uh, as it relates specifically to the unemployment element of this and Bernie Sanders uh, making his voice heard, but also some Republican senators, uh, Lindsey Graham among them. I was going to say quibbling, but it's more than quibbling. I mean, there's some strong disagreements here. Yeah, exactly. And holding it up, we thought it was a sure thing. And yet here we are the end of Wednesday, and it still hasn't uh, gone for a vote. Let's bring in our Bloomberg News global macro strategist, Vince Signorella. So, Vince, it was fascinating. We, you know, we're steadily moving higher, kind of holding, and then feel like that last 15 to 30 minutes, things started to come undone. Um, and folks were texting me, emailing me on the Bloomberg saying, you know, some of it was Sanders, the Sanders headline, and then also Apple saying it's going to delay that uh, iPhone by months at this point. You know, you were there on the Macro Squawk desk, which everybody can check uh, on your terminal by typing SQUA GO on the Bloomberg. Um, Tell us how you saw it play out. Um, Actually, I was a little surprised at the Apple list because I squawked it like two hours before the redhead uh it was out it was out on a tweet and um and so when i saw some people telling me there was moving on apple i was like you're a little late on this one and maybe if you listen to the squawk i guess you would have been early on it wow um, quick flex i, I, I like it signorella so yeah, what, what, I, I think feeling the burn is what people were really feeling on this yeah one. well what uh, do you mean well, market, yeah so what sorry, do you mean sorry. feeling the bird so why did we see the well, markets the market go down was up yeah. The market really was trading with a better tone today, feeling like we were going to get this bill today. Um, even when and Pelosi said, we're not voting on it today, uh, we haven't seen it, it's going to come Thursday or Friday. I thought the markets would pull back a little bit, but they still kept going because the belief is, you know, they really, really need to get this done by this week. People just, you know, can't eat. Uh, and then Sanders out of left field said, I'm going to slow, I'm going to stop this thing. And I think if I, if I read it correctly, his opposition was... Um, they changed, uh, an, um, they, they added an addendum because they realized that they put a, a, into this bill that people could get more in unemployment insurance than they could actually make during the year from their old job. Right. And the politicians said, well, you know, that's kind of not fair, really. And, and Bernie said, well, no, it isn't. They should be able to get more unemployment. So it, it's counterintuitive, really, when you think about it. And why he would hold up the bill simply for that. Um, most people are just finding it pretty incredulous, and the market couldn't digest that. Yeah. I think then, if you add in the fact that we get jobless claims tomorrow, I would have I would have thrown my hat in the ring too and said, "I'm out." Well, don't you <laughs> listen? As much as we have been primed and prepped for a really killer whopping number, I can't like fathom seeing it on the Bloomberg when it finally crosses Vince. I mean, it's still going to be mind blowing. It, it's going to be ugly. I mean, the the survey estimates one point five million. Um, BI, our economists are looking at 1.7. Uh, a guy in Canada tweeted to me today and said, then if you guys get our numbers, and Bullard referred today in his, his speech, he referred to Canada when he said, these are going to be ugly. Canada has 5%. And the guy in Canada, a buddy of mine, did the math and said, that's 8 million jobless claims against the U.S. if you get 5%. Oh yeah. I just, I just saw a moment ago that New York said they're getting calls on their hotline of 1.7 million a, a, a day. Like the last count was 1.7 million. They usually get 10,000. California has had a million unemployment claims in a month. Yeah. So even if you do, even if you don't do linear, which it probably is, you take their 250. If you double that in New York, you're already halfway at the survey estimate. Yeah, so right. This, I'm, I'm thinking it's going to be really nasty. Right. This, the, sur- the survey estimate on the Bloomberg is 1.64 million. 
Well, okay, last it popped up a little. Yeah, and last week it was two hundred eighty-one thousand. Just yeah. a little perspective, everyone. And to put it into another another layer of that, I, there's a really good chance a lot of states' uh, websites are breaking down and people can't get in. Yeah, I would expect even next week's numbers to be even uglier. And and this is this is a number the market hasn't cared about in a long time. Right, we've totally forgotten about jobless claims. It's got to be a year or so that nobody's even cared because we look at the unemployment, the, the payroll figures. Mm. Um,